are you really happy? When you wake up every day, do you feel like you know what you're meant to do? Or do you often feel lost in the busy rush of life, looking for something more meaningful? In today's fast-moving world, it's easy to forget what's really important. We often chase quick happiness and approval from others. But what if there's a way to find true joy, a kind of calm that doesn't go away, no matter what life throws at you? Welcome to the Ultimate Stoicism Guide to Building a Joyful Life. This is a place where we dive into old wisdom that's perfect for today. We invite you to come and learn about the happiness that Stoic philosophy can bring. It teaches you to stay true to what you believe, see tough times as chances to grow, and be at peace right now. Are you ready to change your life from the inside? Let's start this journey together, finding out the secrets to a really happy life. Everything will come to you on its own if you don't ask for love. Hey there, you've reached the stoic flow, a place where old wisdom and modern life meet. Don't ask for love, have everything you want on its own. That's what today's show is about. What we're going to talk about today is summed up in this quote, he who loves himself has no rival. As you think about yourself, picture yourself as the star you radiate confidence and self-assurance. You don't need love or praise. These inner strengths easily bring other people into your path, just like gravity pulls the moon to the earth. Persons are pulled to you without having to beg or make unreasonable demands if you have a lot of self-confidence. The difficult dance of love and relationships will be looked at today from the point of view of stoicism. For real, rewarding relationships to form you need to know yourself, trust others, and have good self-esteem. According to Stoicism, the key to a fulfilling connection is being true to oneself, not winning or always giving. People who study personal growth also look at how the choices we make today and tomorrow affect our lives. Keep in mind that like the stars, we change all the time. People naturally find and keep important relationships when they accept their best selves. In what ways does Stoicism work? Now, technology and social media often make it hard to connect with real people, which makes it hard to build connections. It's easier to make close relationships in this digital age, even though it has many perks. Stoicism and old philosophy, both of which are rich in wisdom, may not directly address love relationships, but they can teach you a lot about this aspect of life. Stoic ideas can help you figure out the trends that are affecting your choice of a partner. We talk about them on this show. Being aware and understanding things in our lives is very important, as Stoicism tells us. By being very aware of your surroundings and the things going on around you, you give yourself the tools you need to achieve your life goals. I think you should use clear-headed reasoning instead of emotion when you're looking for a partner. People who are basically the same as you are more likely to share your ideals. An ancient Stoic philosopher named Epictetus said, We have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. This means that when it comes to relationships, you should pay attention to more than just words. Stop believing the lie that love at first sight exists before we can start to learn how to love. This idea often seems very beautiful in stories and movies about love. According to it, love is a spontaneous, strong emotion that is mostly caused by physical desire or energy that can't be explained. Things that happen in society or in our own minds can give us ideas, but we shouldn't let them fool us. That's not how love works. It's more like a plant that needs to be carefully cared for. It takes a lot of focus, time, patience, trust, and hard work to care for someone in this way. If someone fails you, it can be very painful for real love to end. Real love, passion, and just sexual desire are not the same thing. Your relationship could go badly or you might not be able to move on from someone if you cross these lines. The emotional scars that people get from this kind of confusion can last a lifetime or even years. Seneca, 
A Stoic philosopher once said, we suffer more often in our minds than in reality. This is especially true when hearts are hurting. Let's keep our minds clear and our feet on the ground when it comes to love. It's important for us to understand that this isn't an emotional moment, but a path of growth and respect for each other. The idea that love is a slow, loving process is even more important now, when people want things right away. So, instead of looking for quick gratification, this piece of advice says to treat love like a long-term project, with patience and dedication. This way of thinking not only makes us feel better, but it also fits with the stoic idea of living in harmony with nature. This means never pushing or pressing love to grow. Honest love means getting to know someone, committing to them, and having a lot of respect for who they are and what they're worth. That person your partner is becoming should also be loved and respected. In fact, this is what makes any healthy, loving bond strong, not just silent ones. As you go through life, remember that the relationships you make are very important. This rule can be used in any setting, not just emotional ones. Do not forget that liking someone else is not the only thing that matters. You must also love yourself. When you love someone, you should care for and respect them just as much as you care for and respect yourself. Is that fair? It was Seneca who said, we suffer more often in our dreams than in real life. When it comes to love, he taught us that our feelings should be based on truth, not on desires that aren't realistic or are too strong. You should never ask for love, which is right on topic for today. Work on a love that comes easily, is shared, and is built on knowing and respecting each other's needs. Friends, finally, try to get to know each other well enough and love each other as a stoic, that love comes naturally. Don't forget to use your wisdom to keep your feelings in check and let your connections give you strength and calm. Not only will this make your love life better, it will make your whole life better. When you give something, you get something back, according to Stoicism. We should all work to make the town we live in a better place by being linked. We can really use this idea of exchange in our personal relationships especially sexual ones. For a shared life to work, we need to show our partners how much we value what they do for us and make our relationship stronger. There is a beat of respect and awareness in this, like when two people dance and both give and take steps at the same time. There is a very important lesson we can learn from Stoicism about love. Never ask for love. Two minds should talk and respect each other when love is real and deep. It is very important to respect yourself and know what you're worth. Stoic wisdom tells us that in a relationship, we should never give more than we receive. Making sure that both people love and work hard is what this is all about, not keeping score. The philosopher Epictetus said, we have two ears and one mouth, so we can listen twice as much as we speak. This means that when we're with someone, we should consider both our own and their needs, making sure that we give and receive in a balanced way. If yourself is giving more love than getting, it's time to rethink your relationship. Maintaining your dignity and knowing when it's time to move on will be made easier by this. No matter how much it hurts, this is important for a healthy heart and mind. Stoicism tells you when to let go for your own benefit and not to suffer alone. Let's follow the stoic virtue of exchange and make sure that our relationships are based on respect, understanding and fair giving as we maneuver through the waters of love and relationships. Real love should always feel like an honor, never a burden, and it should go both ways. Self-respect in the setting of relationships, which functions as a beacon, illuminates the path to real happiness and mental resilience. Imagine yourself in a situation where you're struggling to find happiness and your partner's actions are constantly making you feel bad. That situation will only make your pain last longer and slowly destroy your self-respect if you stay there, even after honest talks and pleas for change. 
When someone loves and cares for you without doing the same for them, your inner light starts to fade. Know that you have the power and need to stop a relationship that isn't good for you and love and respect yourself during these times. It's amazing how time, with its infinite wisdom, can heal even the darkest mental wounds. But scars don't always mean that someone was hurt, even though they last a long time. It's important to realize that we have no control over how other people act. The stoic attitude can help you see things more clearly and with more wisdom when things are bad. We can't change the outside circumstances, but we can always choose how to respond to them, said the stoic philosopher Epictetus. Stoicism teaches us to focus on moving forward with self-respect and dignity, leaving behind what doesn't make us happy and taking only the lessons learned and the strength gained. Keep in mind that your thoughts and feelings are not the only things that make you who you are. After a breakup, you can decide how to handle things. You will acquire more wisdom and have a better understanding of your life's journey if you choose to act with dignity. Today's problems with love and relationships are a lot like this way of thinking. It also gives us good advice on how to deal with these tough emotional areas. It's important to look for a life partner beyond the clear, above and beyond physical appeal. Of course, how someone looks does affect their relationship. It's like a spark in the puzzle of love. That being said, keep in mind that it's only brief. It was said by the Stoics that outward beauty changes quickly, like a leaf in the wind. Look at the person's inner beauty, attitude and views that will help the relationship last instead. If your relationship is built only on youth and beauty, you will lose yourself in the long run. As the years go by, look for a stronger relationship that will last. Beauty is just a dream that changes based on what society wants, so don't get caught up in it. The past is gone, but the future is possible to think about. You should try to find a smart person who can be your friend, your teacher and your rock when things get tough. Think about what your relationship will be like in a few years. Stoic philosophy advises us to value wisdom and resilience when looking for a partner to build a life and start a family with. The other thing we should do is find someone who makes us feel safe and gives us a reason to work together. Both men and women can benefit from these words of wisdom. When choosing a life partner, last but not least, Look for qualities that will last longer than looks. To make the relationship last, you should also look for one that is strong, deep and deep. Not how someone looks on the outside, but how they feel on the inside was what the Stoics believed did matter. You'll not only find a partner if you follow this advice, but you'll also find a road full of fun, growth and love that lasts. Recognize that no one is perfect and don't try to find an ideal partner like the ones in romantic pictures. This will help you understand and stay in love. When we get too close to someone who doesn't feel the same way we do, we can lose sight of what makes us valuable and separate from others. This quest keeps us busy and may even change who we are as we try to win their love. Stoicism advises us to accept the things we cannot control, and one of those things is other people's feelings. Please don't try to control or make someone else feel the same way we do. For finding out how to deal with difficult relationships, this information is very useful. When it comes to love and relationships, Epictetus, a famous Stoic philosopher, once said, It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it. This means that we should accept the liberty of others as well as our own. You should remember that love shouldn't turn into a battlefield where people fight for respect or acceptance. It should instead be a way for both of you to learn and grow. If you find yourself in a situation where your feelings are not returned, take a step back and consider your options. Never forget that the fact that someone else can't see how valuable you are doesn't change that way. Focus on what you can control, your deeds, your minds, and your way to a happy life.
This is the Stoic philosophy. By doing this, you can avoid going after a false ideal that will only let you down and instead prepare yourself for genuine connections that will improve your quality of life. Always keep in mind that the world is full of various types of people, especially when dealing with private matters. People don't turn you down because you're not good enough. They do it because your standards or personalities didn't match up. In his famous quote, Epic Titus said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it. Being turned down is not a loss, it's a chance to learn and grow. For longer periods of time, it becomes more clear that the orientation wasn't quite right. There are many people in the world who will see and respect your true worth, so keep looking for real ties. For someone who shares your spirit, your unique qualities and honesty are really valuable. Each no you hear is a step closer to the yes that speaks to your soul, so don't see them as missed opportunities. They know how important you are and promise you a happy marriage that will make your life better. This yes is more than just an acceptance. In this day and age where relationships can feel shallow, it's important to stay true to yourself and not give up your core values to achieve respect. Don't ask for love. The right person will recognize and value your true self. To get the love you deserve, let your real self do the speaking. A stoic principle says to focus on what you can control. This way of doing things not only fits with that idea, but it also makes sure that the love you find is real and rewarding. Marcus Aurelius, Emperor of Rome, and his wife Faustina were a great example of how to treat each other with respect and love. In real life, they showed what patient love looks like. They were mentally strong and deeply loved each other, so they weren't just married for position or ease. Marcus Aurelius, a loyal Stoic and a role model of wisdom, found in Faustina not only a wife, but also a life partner whose mental and emotional fortitude matched his. Their relationship was based on the Stoic values of moderation, fairness, courage, and wisdom. As leaders of the country and as people in a relationship, it showed how dedicated they were to these beliefs. Living up to the Stoic ideal of dealing with suffering with grace, they dealt with life's rough waves in a calm and sensible way. Using their combined resilience, they were able to get through the challenges they faced, such as individual deaths and political unrest. Faustina was always there for Marcus Aurelius, even when he was sad because he had to be ruler. The fact that they were close even when there were problems and rumors from outside showed how strong their bond was and how moral courage and loyalty were important to them. This love story between Marcus Aurelius and Faustina can teach us a lot about love and partnerships. According to the Stoics, love is a choice, a promise to value someone's character and honesty over how they look. You should look for someone who is a better fit for you than just getting along with you physically or financially. These traits that last are what make a friendship important as Stoics. Marcus and Faustina love each other because of who they are, not how they look, as Seneca said. Do not forget to find a partner whose beliefs and spirit are similar to your own when you are in the difficult world of love and relationships. Whoever you choose should be honest and have good character. They will be there for you through life's storms. You need to do these things to have a deep, satisfying relationship that lasts. Remind yourself that the most important things in life and love are how strong the tie is, how well the ideals match up, and how much respect each person has for the other. To find and keep a strong and deep love, read these tips. It's important not to love too much because life is short, so enjoy all the good things in it. Spending too much time late makes it easy to ignore issues. Put yourself at ease and enjoy this naturally lovely life. You are set on working hard and finding ways to get ahead because you always want the future to be better and happier than the present. A life without regrets is a life without big regrets. 
you fail a lot, but over time you learn that failure is not a choice in your life. Even if you try really hard, there are some things in life that you just can't get. Just enjoy what you have sometimes. Only you will feel sad and moved if you love too much. That saying goes, the deeper the love, the greater the suffering. If you love someone too much, you can lose yourself and your life will fall apart. Don't put yourself through this. A girl and her boyfriend wrote a true story about how they couldn't live without each other after three years of being together. He told her he would call her a lot, but one day he had to work in a different place. It was a while before the calls stopped happening at all. Following this, he told her he loved someone else and wanted to end their relationship. In order to talk to him and beg him to change his mind, she cried, called and texted him. He lived in his city for days while she waited. She took the train into town. They didn't talk about it for a few days. At last, she felt let down and left. To pay for her ticket, she borrowed money from a friend and never looked back. Around that time, she looked like she was an adult. It's just you and that person who loves someone deeply, but no one else feels or appreciates it. Asking someone to love you isn't always better than loving them too much. Before you ask other people to love you, you need to love yourself first. A lot of people will come into your life. Not all of them will be able to stay with you until the end, but some will. You may only need someone for a short time if you love them very much. Never underestimate the importance of self-love. A love that is too deep can quickly drown you, so keep that in mind. Do you believe in love so strongly that you would sacrifice your nature and dignity to have it? It's important to love yourself before anyone else can love you. Going to the graveyard quickly is possible if you don't stay up late. Many people don't get enough rest, but their bodies need it to wind down after a long day. Some people don't go to sleep at night, that they can only be themselves at night because the things they do during the day have taken up all their free time. Their minds are still not making sense about how the things they are doing are bad for them and their health. There is a lot of competition for good jobs that pay well these days. Many people don't know how to work hard and fight to get the skills and traits that other people want. The goal is to get better faster. So many people stay up all night to work and study. Their lives will drag on because they don't know that staying up all night is bad for them. It's good to be alive and content with what you have now is a saying that many people don't care about because they believe they can reach their goals if they work better. What these people don't understand is that life is short and should be enjoyed. These words are sometimes ignored by kids who are too young to understand what they mean. When you're young, you always hope for a better future, so you work hard and look for ways to improve your self-esteem. It's a big mistake to try to live a perfect life and never fail. Some kids won't get this until they're adults, so it's too late for them. Take care of your health and enjoy life instead of worrying too much about how important success is. Getting to the graveyard quickly is possible if you don't stay up too late. Not being great is not as important as having fun. Getting enough sleep will make you feel good the next day. Studying and working will be fun for you. Too much thinking is what makes things worse. This makes a lot of people unhappy because they think and worry too much. Although they know that dwelling on the past and the future does not assist them, they do so. They want everything to be perfect, so they think too much. The idea that they need to be perfect hurts them. They don't understand. They worry too much about what other people think, which makes them think too much. These people don't understand that what they're doing is bad for them. Being too gloomy and always seeing the worst that could happen makes some people think too much. That makes them sad, but they don't know it. Be upbeat and live in the present. Don't think about it too much. Enjoy how lovely life is. Stress and worries that aren't important should not take up your time and energy. Be happy and calm instead of taking everything too seriously. Be cool and cheerful as you deal with any issues or problems you have. 
Stay strong and don't let them make you sad. Live your life to the fullest because it's only short. Have you ever felt the hurt of being disrespected, the weight of being ignored, or the pain of being completely ignored while feeling helpless? You are not the only one if that's the case. The exploration for today is designed to lead you on a journey of resilience. Not only was Marcus Aurelius a Roman emperor, but he was also a Stoic scholar whose wisdom has stood the test of time. Marcus Aurelius used Stoic ideals to deal with both the problems from the outside and the problems within his own empire. His ideas are now a source of power for people who have felt left out or unimportant. This trip through Stoicism is made just for you, if you've ever wished you had the tools to rise above disrespect. Marcus Aurelius, who was in charge of an empire, found comfort and strength in Stoic thought. The lessons he taught are just as useful today as they were in ancient Rome. This is the way for you to get back not only peace, but also your dignity and natural power. Every minute you spend here is a step toward building up tough armor that can withstand even the meanest words. So, if you've ever felt like you had to be strong no matter what life threw at you, come along on this tough journey. Let Marcus Aurelius be your guide as you arm your minds with ancient wisdom that fosters a dignity that not only protects you from disrespect, but also pushes you toward a life of strength, dignity, and unwavering power. Lesson 1. Know Thyself – The Stoic Defense Against Disrespect A timeless concept that starts our trip into the world of Stoic wisdom is Know Thyself. It is said that Stoicism is like a strong shield against the arrows of disrespect. This old saying can be heard ringing through the halls of philosophy. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic philosopher-emperor, says that knowing yourself is the most important thing you can do to protect your mind. It's not just empty words. Aurelius said, your ability to control your thoughts, treated with respect, is all that protects your mind from false perceptions, false to your nature and that of all real beings. Knowing ourselves well protects us from disrespect and lets us stand tall when it's coming our way. Why is knowing yourself so important when you're being disrespected? The answer is that it makes our roots stronger. When people treat us badly, they often pick on the weak spots we're not sure about. Being more aware of our ideals, skills and flaws, on the other hand, makes disrespect impossible to grow. Stoics believe that the best way to learn about yourself is to be practical. It's important to be honest with yourself when you think and you can do this through structured meditation or just quiet thought. Asking deep questions about core values, strengths and flaws is the first step. Making a list of unwavering principles and recognizing both strengths and weaknesses is a powerful practice that follows. This process is always going on. Even the strongest kings have to rethink their plans every so often. The real you, your true self, should not change despite the steady flux of life. The Stoics said that authenticity is the way to eudaimonia, which means deep happiness and satisfaction. When you live in line with your real nature, you build a strong foundation for your life. Self-knowledge is a guide that directs us through the winds of disrespect, not just a defense strategy. When we know ourselves better, Disrespect has less of an effect on us. Being aware of oneself is the key to an unconquerable country, a place where no disrespect can get through. Lesson 2. It's not your business what other people think. The second lesson, which is about a familiar problem, other people's views, comes out as we learn more about the Stoic beliefs. Like Epicurus said, we cannot control the impressions others form about us, and the effort to do so only debases our character. This deep realization makes us think about how much we let outside ideas affect our inner kingdom. Think about how much time and mental energy you've wasted worrying about what other people think of you. Marcus Aurelius said that caring about what other people think is a bad way to give up your power. 
Trusting judges with the keys to your inner kingdom is like giving up control of your castle. Why do we give other people's opinions so much weight, especially when they are disrespectful? Part of this tendency may come from the way society has taught us that we need to achieve things or get support from other people in order to feel good about ourselves. Stoicism, on the other hand, tells us to stay away from this road and instead stress that real approval comes from living in harmony with our nature and values. When you find yourself worrying about what other people think, take a moment to ask yourself, why does this matter to me? Most of the time, you'll find that it doesn't, not in the big picture. Recognize that when someone disrespects you, it's just their opinion, shaped by their own biases, fears, and limits. They shouldn't have any more power over how you feel than a leaf falling from a tree. Letting go of the control that other people's views have over you is a freeing activity. Think of these thoughts as chains that are holding you back and picture yourself breaking free one by one. You can find inner peace with these kinds of thought tasks, just like the Stoics do. The goal isn't to become immune to all criticism. Positive criticism from people you trust is helpful. Still, there is a big difference between disrespect and helpful feedback. You become a more successful leader, whether you're in charge of a country or your own life, by learning to distinguish between the two. This is in addition to developing wisdom. So, the next time someone treats you with disrespect, take a deep breath, think of Epicurus, and let it go like water off a duck's back. It's not your business what other people think, especially if they voice disrespectful opinions. It shouldn't be. Lesson 3. Take charge of what you can and ignore what you can't. The third lesson we learn from Stoic wisdom is to focus on what you can control and let go of the rest. As Epicurus wisely said, we cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. For example, when someone disrespects you with words or actions, it's easy to feel angry or frustrated. That being said, the austere view adds a new twist. What other people do and say is out of your control, but how you react is completely within your control. It is important to remember that what you think about, you become. They get stronger when they focus on disrespect and hate. Know what you can control and what you can't control to give yourself more power. Think of yourself as the calm in the middle of a storm. Even if chaos is all around you, your heart is still there. But how can you use what you've learned in real life? Start by making a list of the things you can control about the situation. Are you able to change what someone else did or said? No. Are you able to control how you think, how you feel, and what you do next? Of course, you should shift your attention to what you can control once you know what it is. Focus on those things and let go of your connection to the others. It's like taking care of a yard. You can't change the weather or the quality of the earth, but you can water the plants, pull weeds, and make the surroundings good for them. In the same way, take care of the things you can control in your life and let go of the rest. By sticking to this rule, you're not only handling disrespect with royal calm, you're also becoming a stoic philosopher. You rise above the noise and chaos around you and keep a safe place of inner peace. It is impossible for disrespect to grow in this calm state. So, the next time you experience disrespect or disturbance, take a moment to breathe and ask yourself, what parts of this situation am I able to control? And focus your energy on those parts. Most of the time, disrespect is just noise that takes your attention away from the good road of self-mastery and inner peace that you are always on. Lesson 4. What we see is what we get. The fourth lesson of our trip through Stoic wisdom is that what we think is what is real. People who believed in the Stoics and Marcus Aurelius, who said, life is opinion, both agreed on this basic concept. It shows how much our thoughts and feelings affect our actual lives. 
Why is this important information for dealing with disrespect? Because how we talk about an event often affects how disrespectful we are. Think about a rude comment. It could be an attack on your character, or it could be a sign of the other person's problems or bad reasoning. The key is freedom, your choice. Do you let someone else's opinion affect how you feel about yourself, your day, or your mood? Or do you know that you have full control over how you see things and what you think? You unintentionally give an action power over your emotions when you choose to see it as rude. If you change the story though, the same action loses its power all of a sudden. It changes into a poisonous snake that has lost its fangs and can hiss and rattle, but can't hurt anyone. How can you use this wisdom in your everyday life? When you are disrespected next, don't respond right away. Take advantage of that important moment to choose how you see things. Ask yourself, is this really about me or could it be a sign of the other person's problems? Most of the time, showing disrespect implies something bad about the other person rather than something bad about yourself. Go one step further and think about turning the story around completely. Instead of feeling attacked or put down, see it as a chance. Reaffirm your beliefs, self-worth and resilience by using it as a mirror, not to look closely at flaws. If you see disrespect as a challenge instead of a threat, it can help you get where you want to go instead of getting in the way. This change in how you see things gives you the strength to get past the instant pain and find strength in the experience, which leads to personal growth and resilience. 5. Your mind is your stronghold. As we start the fifth lesson of our stoic trip, we find a truth that gives us strength. Your mind is your fortress. One of the strongest supporters of the mind's power, Marcus Aurelius, put this idea into words. The soul becomes dyed with the color of its thoughts. In this lesson, we talk about the amazing resilience and safety your mind can offer, especially when dealing with disrespect or problems from the outside. Imagine a tall castle that can't be broken into and stands strong against storms and sieges. Your mind is that stronghold. When things from the outside, like disrespect, hit your walls, you still have the power to decide if the drawbridge goes down. You have the power to choose who or what can enter your holy mental area. You are in complete control and aware of your true power in this space. So, how does one make the mind stronger? The first step on the trip is to understand the difference between events happening outside of you and how you react to them. You may not be able to change how other people treat you, but you have complete control over how you feel inside. Keep a close eye on it, like a king is careful about who gets into his fortress. You should be careful about what thoughts, feelings and ideas you let into your head. Practicing awareness is a very useful skill. Pay attention to your thoughts as they come up and decide if they help you or hurt you. Being mindful lets you stop negative thoughts at the gates and look at them carefully before they get inside your fortress. Once you know what they are, replace them with ideas that are in line with your ideals and views of yourself. Emotional resilience building is another effective method. Think of each disrespectful act as a mock attack on your castle, a test of its walls and defenses. Your walls get stronger with each battle. Resilience is the ability to bounce back from adversity and disrespect without becoming isolated. It will take some time to build your fortress. You have to be dedicated, give it time, and know your limits and ideals very well. But once it's up, it gives unimaginable peace and power. Its walls aren't made of stone, but of self-respect, wisdom, and the unbreakable spirit of stoicism, so no amount of disrespect can get through them. Lesson 6. Don't think that bad people won't do bad things. In our sixth lesson, we look at expectations, especially those that have to do with what other people do. Marcus Aurelius, a man of great wisdom, said, 
If something outside of you bothers you, it's your judgment about it, and you can get rid of that judgment. To put it more simply, if someone hurts you beyond your standards, it's not their fault. It's what you expected from them. This view isn't meant to put the blame on the target. Instead, it's a warning to keep your standards in check. Think about dealing with someone who acts disrespectfully or badly all the time. Every time they act in a way that is true to who they are, it hurts you, even though you seem to be expecting something different. This lesson gives you the courage to stop expecting dangerous people not to hurt you. It's in their nature, just like you wouldn't blame a scorpion for biting. It doesn't help to feel emotionally attacked when someone is just being themselves. By not setting unnecessary goals for yourself, you keep your emotions from getting out of hand. Taking this proactive step is like building more walls around your castle. When you know what to expect, you can plan ahead, keep your emotions in check, and deal with others with clear understanding. In real life, if you find out that someone is mean or rude, you should change your standards and amount of involvement with them. Without jeopardizing your self-esteem, you can still be polite, maintain your dignity, and keep your cool. That's not what this is about. It's about making a smart choice for your mental and emotional health. Developing kindness is another part of this lesson. Know that people who are bad for you usually do bad things because they are hurt, scared, or don't know any better. This doesn't make their behavior okay, but it gives you some background information that might help you feel less angry or resentful. When you let go of these bad feelings, you can live your life the way you want to. The next time you meet someone who is mean, don't be surprised when they act the way they normally do. Think about Marcus Aurelius and change what you expect. Know that when you make the smart choice for your own health, you are demonstrating stoicism in its most useful form. Lesson 7. Being angry is a chain, but being kind is freedom. As we move on to the seventh lesson, our attention turns to the important point where two responses meet, revenge and kindness. The immortal words of Seneca ring in our minds, delay is the best cure for rage. When we are treated badly or disrespectfully, our reaction may be to get back at the person who hurt us and even the score. Stoicism, on the other hand, asks us to go beyond this urge showing us that revenge starts a chain reaction, while kindness leads to freedom. Think about what revenge means. At best, it gives you a short-lived sense of joy and fairness. In a deeper sense, revenge keeps a circle of harm going, one that traps both sides in an endless loop of bad feelings. Each act of payback leads to another, creating a chain that can't be broken. As long as this chain holds you, you're not really free. On the contrary, there is kindness. Being compassionate doesn't mean putting up with rude behavior or giving up when you're being mistreated. Instead, it means letting go of automatic and often harmful habits of behavior and picking a higher road that frees your mind and emotions. What does this mean for you in your everyday life? First, go back and read the last lesson again keeping in mind that bad people often do bad things because they are having a hard time. This knowledge can help people care about each other. Then, take a step back and think about what revenge will really do. Will it make you happy in the long run, or will it keep you stuck in a loop of bad feelings? Instead of getting back at them, try to calm things down. Be cool and firm when you speak, and don't hold grudges. Picking your fights wisely is important. Not all disrespect needs a response. Not responding at all is sometimes the best thing you can do. Fostering a setting where both people can grow is possible when you show kindness. Your kindness could act as a mirror, making the other person think about what they're doing. It doesn't have to, but when you show kindness, you free yourself from negative feelings like anger, bitterness, or sorrow. This lesson gives us freedom which is its main idea. The power to decide what you do, how you feel, and eventually, the course of your life. 
Compassion gives you the strength to take charge of your life, free from chains and weight. Lesson 8. Visualizing Bad Things as we move on to the eighth lesson, we learn about a stoic practice that seems strange but works incredibly well, negative imagery. We cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them, said Epicurus in a quote from his wisdom. We train ourselves to handle hardship, including instances of disrespect, with grace and resilience through negative thinking. What does it mean to visualize negatively? It makes us think about what might happen if things don't go as planned, causing problems, loses, or acts of disrespect. You might ask, why think about bad things happening? There are two reasons for this, being ready and appreciating what you have. Thinking about possible bad things can help you in two ways. First, it prepares your mind for the chance of bad things happening, which makes them less shocking when they do. This is like a fire drill. Learning how to put out a fire makes you better prepared for the real thing. Second, imagining bad things that could happen makes you value the things that are going well in your life more. When you think about losing something important or going through hard times, problems like disrespect in the moment become more meaningful. You know that things could be worse, which makes the present moment more acceptable and even nice. How do you make this a part of your daily life? Every day, spend a few minutes visualizing bad things. Imagine losing your things, having relationships end, or dealing with disrespect from different people. Give yourself full access to the feelings that come with these images. Then, bring your attention back to the present and notice that these bad things aren't happening. Let us now make a link to how to deal with disrespect. Because you've already imagined situations where you face disrespect, a single incident has less of an effect. When things get tough, you can tell yourself, ah, this is what I prepared for, and handle it like a wise old man. Your mental balance stays the same, and you move forward without being affected, ready to face whatever comes next. Lesson 9. Think about things and meditate. As we look into the ninth lesson, we come to the deep practices of meditation and thought. According to Marcus Aurelius, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. This ancient wisdom shows how important it is to think about yourself and his lasting work, meditations, is proof of this. How do meditation and deep thought help you deal with disrespect with the poise of a king. By doing these things, you can look more closely at your thoughts, feelings, and actions. Take a step back from the picture to see the whole thing. In highly charged situations, like when you feel disrespected, being close can make it hard to see the bigger picture, which can make you act on impulse or make it hard to make good decisions. Giving yourself time every day to think and meditate can help you relax and clear your mind. Taking this conscious pause gives you time to think about things without bias, even if you think someone was being disrespectful. What were the things that led to it? Was your answer correct? Could a calmer response have been picked? Mindfulness meditation, in particular, makes this process of reflection better. It helps you become more aware of your feelings and thoughts without judging them. This increased awareness acts as a cushion, stopping you from reacting quickly to disrespect or other bad things that happen. Still, it's useful for more than just judging events and responses. Think about how you can use the things you've learned in real life. You might realize that someone's disrespect made you upset because of an expectation you had. Instead, you might find that the disrespect hit on a sensitive part of your life, showing you where you need to grow as a person. No matter what insights you have, use them to build your personal growth, your resilience, and your daily life into a more deep expression of stoic principles. Embrace change in Lesson 10. We've reached the 10th lesson in Stoic Wisdom. Accept that things change. Seneca said, 
He suffers more than necessary, who suffers before it is necessary. As we learn this lesson, we should recognize that everything changes, even disrespectful times. Disrespect is temporary, just like everything else. It is possible to question people's thoughts, actions and words because they are affected by their surroundings, new experiences and personal growth. Knowing that rude times will pass gives you the strength to handle them with grace and calm. Use this lesson as a warning that rude meetings don't make you who you are, they're just temporary events. Though disrespectful times come and go like storms do. When you accept that things change, you let go of the weight of holding on to bad memories. You build resilience instead by remembering that even the hardest times are short-lived. Adopting an aware attitude when faced with disrespect is one way to put this lesson into practice. Often, remind yourself that things will change. Ask yourself, will this matter in a day, a month or a year? Keeping this in mind helps you mentally separate, which keeps you from hurting needlessly. Accepting that things change over time also requires courage to be appreciative of the good things in your life. Realizing that problems, like disrespect, only last for a short time makes it more important to treasure moments of respect, kindness and joy. By looking at things this way, you can find balance, enjoying how quickly negative things go away and how quickly positive things become beautiful. Lesson 10 essentially urges you to go with the flow of life and accept that disrespect, like everything else, is a part of the constantly shifting currents. When you accept that things change over time, you become strong because you know that no storm, no matter how strong, can break your resolve. Have you ever felt like your life was turning you around and throwing you into a mess of feelings and turns you didn't see coming? Today, we're going to look into the old wisdom of Stoicism and find 10 secrets that will help you stay calm every day, making you like a rock that can't be shaken when life gets rough. Sometimes it's hard to understand how some people can handle even the hardest situations without losing their cool. Consider this. Stoicism, a theory that has shaped the minds of great thinkers for ages, holds the key to their resilience. It's like an old-fashioned guidebook for getting through life's ups and downs. It gives you the tools to be that steady force when everything else seems to be in chaos. Take care of the things you can control. Stoicism is a way of life that can change you. The first step to daily self-focus is to accept what you can control. Imagine that you are the creator of your own life and that your trip is a block of marble. Stoicism, a theory that has long dominated the wisdom world, tells us to focus on what we can control and ignore the rest. It's like being able to control how you react to things in life. Philosopher Epictetus once said, we cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. This makes sense when you think about it. Life does throw us things, right? The same as that marble block. Now picture yourself carving away at the marble with a knife. Every chip you see is a decision you can make about how to handle life's surprises. You are not at the hands of events. You are the one who is making your future. If every problem and failure were just a blank piece of marble ready to be painted, what would people do? Your mood and the choices you make are what you need to make a beauty out of the mess. It's not about managing things that you can't change. It's about understanding how you react and making your life your own. As it stands, you have no control over the traffic jam, the guy who cuts you off in line at the coffee shop, or the rain that falls on your show. But do you know what you can control? What you do? That changes everything. You can choose to let the rain make you sad or to dance in it. I think your answer is going to be your best. It makes you feel free, doesn't it? If you want to deal with something that you can't control, Stoicism gives you a tool. Make your own way. Don't let your feelings be controlled by what's going on around you. Do not be the sufferer. 
be the artist. So, in the big picture of life, be the artist who carefully shapes their experiences. Accept that you can control how you respond, what you choose, and how you feel. Things can go wrong in life, but if you follow Stoicism, you're not just a player, you're building your future. Start making your creation with that tool. 2. Amor Fati, which means love your fate. Accept your fate as it comes. Seneca, a major figure in Stoicism, gives us this deep wisdom. Amor Fati, which means love of fate, is like a chant. But what does it really mean? It's not enough to just nod and accept what life throws at you. You have to hold it in your arms, love it, and look for the deep spiritual meaning in every turn and twist of your path. Think of it this way. Life's problems aren't things that are meant to stop you. They're more like strong stones that you use to reach your full potential. Seneca isn't just telling us to put up with the rough ride. He wants us to welcome it, hold on tight, and see it as an important part of our big trip. Think of each surprise that life throws at you as an opportunity, not a bother. Show yourself what you're made of. It's like telling the universe, hey, hit me with your best shot. I'm not just here for the smooth rides, I'm here to dance with the storms and come out stronger on the other side. It may sound a little cosmic, but it's a game changer in the real world. You stop complaining about the difficult times and begin seeing them as chances to show off your resilience. You don't have to act like everything is sunshine and rainbows. You can choose to see the beauty in the storm clouds. It's easy to be thankful when everything in your life is going well, but Amor Fati wants you to be thankful for the bad times too. People who give you hard times aren't trying to ruin your day, they're just trying to help you grow and change. So, smile when life throws you a surprise. Accept your fate with open arms, like a long-lost friend, because every mistake and difficulty is an opportunity to become great. There are no straight roads in life. Instead, there are twisting roads. Amor Fati is the secret source that turns every turn into a step on your own epic journey. 3. Memento Mori, which means remember death. This is the Latin term memento mori, which means remember death. I know this sounds pretty sad at first, but stay with me. The Stoics think this idea could change everything. There you are, going about your daily life, caught up in the chaos of it all. They would say, hold on, take a moment to remember that life is short. That sounds heavy, doesn't it? That's the point. As you relax on the couch and scroll through your phone, you might be thinking about whether to go after that dream or put it off until later. And this is where Memento Mori comes in. Like the wise Marcus Aurelius, the Stoics gently tell us, hey buddy, you could die at any time, really, right now. I'm not saying this to scare you. In fact, I want to encourage you. It's about being free, knowing that our time on this moving rock is short. The Stoics say it's a wake-up call that makes you want to stop putting things off. What would you do with your last day if you knew it was almost over? What dreams do you want to follow? What would you say? And what would be going through your mind? The Stoics want you to use this change in your point of view as power. You don't have to live in fear. You can live with purpose. When you realize how short life is, every moment becomes valuable it sets off a chain of events. That sneaky habit of putting things off that we all have trouble with starts to lose its hold. Why wait until tomorrow when today could be the only day you have? Marcus Aurelius says, let the knowledge of your own death guide your choices in what you do, what you say, and what you think. This doesn't mean you should jump out of a plane without a parachute or quit your job to become a rock star overnight. It means you should make sure your actions are in line with what you really care about. It could be fixing a bad relationship, following an interest, or just finding happiness in the little things that happen every day. Remember this time-honored piece of wisdom the next time you find yourself putting off something crucial. Accept memento mori not as a dark cloud, but as a bright spot in the sky that tells you to live fully and honestly. 
In the end, life is too short to waste time being uncertain. 4. The two kinds of control. From the wise Epictetus, let's look into the interesting idea of the dichotomy of control. This idea is like a treasure trove. It's simple, but it's full of deep wisdom. Okay, so let's get started. Life does happen, right? Things like what goes on our pizza are things we can control. Other things, like winning the lottery, are just out of our hands. Epictetus, a sage from long ago, takes it apart for us. Think of your life as a big bag full of things. There are two kinds of ease in that bag. To start, there are the things we have control over, like how we feel, how hard we work, and whether we hit snooze another hundred times. There's also the weather, road jams, or your neighbor's singing night. Yeah, hoping won't change those. This is where things get interesting. Epictetus says we should become superheroes and only think about the things we can control. Why? Well, friend, it's like breaking free from the chains of stress and anger. Imagine that you're playing a game and you only have so much time and energy to use. Not being able to control what you're doing with that energy is like pouring it down the drain. You feel worn out, worried, and, to be honest, a little crazy. But, and this is cool, focusing on what you can control feels like regaining your abilities. All of a sudden, you're not on life's crazy roller coaster. You're in charge of your ship and can lead it through the storm with confidence. For that reason, the next time you're upset that it rained on your picnic or that your Wi-Fi went out during an important Zoom call, take a deep breath, think about the dichotomy of control, and ask yourself, can I do something about this? If the answer is yes, then you can be the hero of your own story. If the answer is no, then don't worry about it. It was wise of Epictetus to say that life is too short to get caught up in things we can't change. Accept the power you have, my friend, and watch as the chains of worry fall away. Then you'll be free to handle anything life throws at you. 5. Visualizing bad things. Have you ever thought about what your life would be like without the things you normally don't think about or value? Like Seneca's idea of negative imagery, which is a strange but effective method. Imagine that you lose something or someone important to you. It sounds a little sad, but bear with me. Imagine that you wake up one morning and all of the things that make your daily routine comfortable are gone. The warm comfort of your bed, the smell of coffee in the morning, and the sound of your loved ones greeting you are all gone. There is now only a creepy silence and nothingness where there used to be plenty. Now, why in the world would you want to think about such a bad exercise? Furthermore, Seneca thought that this action was a powerful way to develop thanks. Taking away the things you're used to for a short time can help you see how valuable the things you do have are. Taking the fog off a window to see the beautiful outside is like that. There's more though. Negative vision can also help you get ready for the unexpected turns that life will inevitably throw at you. Like everything else in life, Problems of all sizes are sure to come up. You build a muscle called resilience by practicing losing things in your mind. It's like putting on mental armor ahead of time, which makes real life problems less painful. Think of it as a superhero training scene where you picture yourself going through tough times, getting through them and coming out better. When problems come up in real life, you're not caught off guard because you've already worked out your mind. Consider it a strange talent that gives you the strength to face life's risks with strengthened minds, even though it may seem strange to think about losing what you care about. In all its dark and scary beauty, negative vision can help you not only enjoy the present, but also handle the ups and downs of the future with strength. After all, the point isn't to dwell on the bad. Rather, it's to use it to find the good and get ready for a stronger, more grateful self. Sixth, the fortress inside. Let's look into Marcus Aurelius's idea of the inner citadel a little more. If you think of it this way, 
It's like having your own personal character base in your thoughts. Stress at work, problems at home, and the general chaos we all deal with can make life pretty crazy. Now, Marcus says that when things are going crazy outside, you should do like a superhero and go to your inner fortress. This isn't a real place with stone walls and moats. It's more of a safe place in your mind. Think of it as your mental fortress where you can be alone. You are the one in control in this refuge, the leader in chief. That's where the confusion of the outside world can't reach you. It's magically possible for you to stay cool, calm and collected, even when storms are outside. When your boss is yelling at you, you have to meet a deadline and it seems like the world is moving too fast. Put on your mental superhero cape and move to your inner fortress. It gives you a chance to calm down, think about what's going on and choose how to react. Outside crazy things can't get through your mental force bubble. Marcus Aurelius isn't just telling you to find a quiet place to relax. He's giving you the keys to your own mental castle, the place where your inner power is stored. It's like having a secret power-up that makes you calm down when things get crazy. Think of it as becoming your own superhero, going from being a stressed-out person to the cool, controlled and super-strong hero of your own story. You're not just getting through the storm in the inner fortress, you're living in it. You can learn how to keep your cool when everything else is going crazy in this mental training. Remember Marcus's wisdom and escape to your inner fortress the next time life throws you a surprise. It's not an escape. It's a plan to face the world with all of your mental superpowers at full strength. Seventh, work on being detached. Let's learn how to practice separation, which is a great skill that Stoicism gives us. Here's how it works. Stoicism gives you a life jacket called healthy detachment and tells you to board it. Being uninterested or distant isn't the point. The point is to keep your worth inside, away from the storms of other people's views. Stoicism says, hey, your worth isn't up for debate in the court of other people's opinions. Imagine Epictetus, the Stoic master, grabbing you by the arm and telling you, you have this superpower to not get upset about things and keep your cool. Let's break it down. Detachment doesn't mean living in a bubbly and not noticing what's going on around you. It's more like having feelings that are covered in Teflon. You get lucky sometimes, but it doesn't last. External results, such as wins, losses, praise, and criticism, come and go like clouds. Stoicism tells you to find your sense of self-worth inside yourself, not affected by the outside weather. Epictetus, the early Stoic teacher, said, You can choose not to have an opinion about something and not let it mess with your vibe. Think about it. As you look through the chaotic sea of social media, you come across views and comments all over the place. You're the gatekeeper of your peace, so let it all slide and maintain your calm, Stoicism tells you. Let's say you're with your family and Aunt Susan doesn't like the job choices you've made. Stand firm and don't let her words ruin your day. Instead, let Stoicism protect your mind. You respect what she says, but don't let it get in the way of your plans. Why? Because your worth isn't tied to how well Aunt Susan likes you. It's like getting to see the show of life from behind the scenes. You enjoy the show and the mood, but when the reviewers start to talk about it, you're still sipping your latte as they talk. Stoicism isn't about having a calm face. It's about having a heart that beats at its own pace, regardless of what else is going on around you. To sum up, my friend, make separation a daily habit. Take on the strength of not having an opinion and let life's waves crash around you while you stand strong and your mind stays the same. Stoicism gives you the freedom to dance through the weather because you know that your worth is an inner light that can't be put out by the wind. Eighth, do what is right, say nice things and think honestly. Act justly, speak kindly and think honestly 
are three pieces of wisdom from Seneca that have stood the test of time. Imagine living a good life in which every action, word and thought you have is motivated by virtue. It's not just a good way to live, it's a plan for how to become a moral beacon, shining a light on those around you and inspiring them. Your deeds are the threads that make up the story of your character in the big fabric of life. Being just means using a moral guide to find your way through the maze of options and making choices that are in line with fairness and rightness. It's about being the kind of person who, when faced with a moral choice, goes down the path that makes the world a better place for everyone. Being kind doesn't just mean saying nice things. It also means putting the warmth of understanding into what you say. Imagine having a chat where the words you use are not only a way to talk, but also a way to heal and find your way. Speaking kindly sends happy vibrations through the air, making a good mood that lasts and helps people connect in a real way. Sincere thought is the quiet engine that drives everything we do and say. Thoughts are like seeds that grow into words and actions. Seneca tells us to grow a garden of honest thoughts that aren't stained by dishonesty or self-interest. It's about having an attitude where sincerity is key and letting your deepest views shape how you act in public. By following these rules, doing what's right, being kind, and having honest thoughts, you become a live example of virtue. When you live your life with ethics, you become a shining example of how to live a better life. Your life turns into a quiet lecture that teaches by example instead of words. Imagine what a difference people who follow Seneca's classic advice would make in a world that is often full of chaos and conflict. They not only have an effect, but they also build a culture based on fairness, kindness and honesty. Being good, saying kind things and having honest thoughts all help make the world a better place. As you go through the ups and downs of daily life, remember Seneca's simple but profound advice. Do what is right, speak kindly and think honestly and watch as your life turns into a work of art of virtue that inspires those around you to start their own path to a more important and caring life. 9. The Power of Right Now In the busyness of our daily lives, it's simple to lose ourselves in old memories or worry about what might happen in the future. There is, however, one piece of old stoic wisdom that stands out like a flashlight, the power of now. Think about this. You're at your desk, thinking about that stupid thing you said last week. Or maybe you're up all night, worried about what tomorrow might bring. Epictetus would tap you on the shoulder and say, hold up, the past is over my friend and the future is still getting ready. But guess what's real, right now. It's kind of like being in a great movie. The scenes that have already happened are behind you and you don't know what will happen next. What you're seeing now, though, is where the action is. Epictetus tells us to take charge of our own lives, shine a light on ourselves and enjoy the present moment since it's the only thing we really have that is ours. It's like a closed book when you think about it. Its pages can't be torn out or written over. The future, on the other hand, is a book that hasn't been read yet. You can hope and dream, but you can't see what's going to happen. But right now, this moment is a blank page ready for your pen. It's where you can choose what to do, act and shape your story. So why waste it on mistakes from yesterday or maybes for tomorrow? We are told by Epictetus to look around and feel the pulse of the present to enjoy the tastes of the present. The most important things in life are the little things that happen every day, like sipping coffee, feeling the sun on your face, or hearing the rain. Oh sure, life isn't always smooth. There are times when the present feels more like a storm than a sunny day. Being aware of the present moment has power, even when things are crazy. It's what keeps you steady in life's chaos and reminds you that you can find peace and meaning in the middle of it all. Okay, friend, take a big breath 
look around and realize how powerful this very moment is. According to Epictetus, see it for what it is, the only reality. Your past is a teacher, your future a mystery, but the now, that's where the magic happens. 10. The only thing that is good is virtue. One last piece of stoic wisdom. Virtue is the only good. Put yourself in the position of being at a split with many possible routes in front of you. Some offer fame, money or fun, while others lead to silence, struggle or giving up something important. In this noisy world of options, the Stoics whisper a truth that has always been true. Virtue is the only good. Having a guide that always points north will help you find your way through the maze of life. But what does this virtue they talk about mean? That's not the point. The point is to live in line with your greatest values, not to be a saint or a superhero. Imagine that every choice you make, every action you take, and every word you speak is filled with goodness. It's not about getting approval from other people or getting things. It's about developing an inner wealth that goes beyond the world's passing joys. The Stoics said that virtue is the most important thing in life. It's the main thing you build your character on and the light that guides you through life's ups and downs. The catch is that it's not always simple to live by virtue. To stand up for what's right, you need courage. To fight temptation, you need temperance and you need wisdom to manage the complicated human experience. Still, virtue is still the best way to judge a life well lived, even though it comes with problems. It's like putting money into gold in a world where wealth is short-lived. While other people chase after short-term benefits, you're building something that will last forever. Remember the Stoics' ancient wisdom, virtue is the only good. Let it be your North Star, the bright star that guides you through the dark times of doubt. And watch as your life turns into a work of ethics, a sign of how powerful goodness can be in a world that is looking for meaning. Stoic ideas support the idea of separating from people and events. Stoicism, an old Greek theory, instructs people to find inner peace by accepting the things they cannot change and focusing on the things they can. Within this video, we will explore the lessons of Stoicism and look at how each principle can be used to carry out the steps listed for separating from people and things. Staying away from that person for a while, Stoicism shows us how important it is to keep our inner peace no matter what is going on around us. Removing yourself from someone for a short time is the first thing that you need to do to divorce them. This is not an attempt to avoid the subject. It's a proactive move to gain perspective and keep our feelings from affecting our decision-making. Letters from the Stoic philosopher Seneca to Lucilius stress the importance of taking time to get to know oneself better. He said, retreat as much as you can to yourself. Surround yourself with people who will make you better welcome those who can make you better. The process works both ways. Men learn as they teach. Simply put, this means taking a short break to think about what happened and how you feel about it. Stoicism teaches that we have control over our emotions and that by taking a step back, we make room to carefully choose our behaviors. Your feelings and thoughts will be easier to think about if you are by yourself. Do not let your feelings affect your decision at this time. Instead, look at the case objectively. Roman Stoics believed that knowing yourself is the first step to controlling your feelings. Seneca's words support this idea. Imagine you're in a noisy, chaotic city. According to Stoicism, it might be a good idea to take a short break when dealing with difficult feelings or a confusing situation involving someone like finding a quiet place in the city to relax. Imagine taking a break, like hitting the pause button, not to avoid the problem forever, but to give yourself a chance to think without being affected by your feelings. Finding a quiet place within ourselves was a topic that the old wisdom men, the Stoics, discussed frequently. 
One of those smart people, Seneca, said, retreat into yourself as much as you can. This is like standing back to see things more clearly. For example, it's like calling a break in a game. You don't abandon the game completely. You just take a short break to clear your mind. Like the weather, our thoughts come and go, as Stoicism says. By taking a break, yourself can calm down and consider what to do next. Don't forget that this step isn't about running away. It's about pausing to find a quiet place in the chaotic world of life. Stoicism says to take a step back because it thinks that our feelings can become overpowering and make it hard to make decisions when things get tough. We can clearly see things after a short break while the storm passes. This is where the Stoics believe we can make decisions based on reason instead of how we're feeling at the moment. If you want to relax, go for a short walk, sit in a park, or be alone in your room. Making a small array for yourself where you can think without being interrupted is highly recommended. You're not trying to escape forever, you're just trying to find some peace to think about things. Thinking carefully about whether separating from people is a smart and good choice is the second step in removing from them. Stoicism emphasizes the goal of eudaimonia, or thriving through moral greatness, and challenges us to match our actions with reason and virtue. Our natural tendency is toward virtue and social order, according to the Stoic concept of oikeiosis, which means appropriation or familiarization. On the other hand, not all partnerships help us grow as Christians. Similar to Epictetus, the Stoics told us to think about the people we hang out with and make smart decisions. Whatever happens to us outside of our control, we can always choose how to react to it. Consider how you relate to the person in question. Are they good for your sanity and moral growth? According to Stoicism, staying away from relationships that are bad for you is not a sign of weakness, but of wisdom and virtue. Being born a slave, the Stoic philosopher Epictetus showed this message by focusing on inner freedom regardless of outside limits. Let's say you're with friends and one of them does something that negatively impacts your mood. According to Stoicism, you should ponder whether it's a good idea to keep hanging out with this person just like you would when picking good friends. In everyday language, it's like asking yourself, is being around this person helping me grow and be happy or is it making things harder? The Stoic thinkers would refer to this as considering whether it's a smart move. The idea here is to consider whether the person you're dealing with is making your life better or more difficult, as Stoicism is big on picking things that make us better people. Stoics think that good friends strengthen our minds and make us better people. Consider your friend as a plant. It gets bigger and healthier if you water it, but it might not do so well if you don't. This is similar to asking yourself if the people around you are like water to your plant or more like a storm. Awesome if being with someone makes you feel like happiness. To be safe, Stoicism suggests putting some space between yourself and them. It's not about being mean or ignoring problems. It's about making decisions that are good for your mind and heart. The goal of Stoicism is to make everything in life better, including the people we hang out with. Detaching's third step, while emphasizing self-discipline and inner strength, does not encourage being alone. Because people are social creatures, the Stoic way includes looking for advice and help from people you trust. The Stoic view urges us to have an honest and open conversation with someone we trust in the third step of separating. The Stoic idea of a mental friend is someone you can talk to about your worries fears and problems. The significance of friendship and its function in our search of virtue were widely discussed by Seneca in his writings. A friendly acquaintance, a man he may consult just like he would a mirror, is the next greatest blessing that can be bestowed upon a man after sound judgment and a modest temper, he said. 
talk about your feelings and thoughts with a trusted friend who lives by the stoic values of virtue and wisdom. Sharing our feelings through this talk is both a way to relax and gain useful insights and points of view. Growing a sense of community and strengthening social bonds are important parts of the path to separation, according to Stoicism. According to Stoicism, talking to someone you trust can be very helpful when you're dealing with difficult emotions or a perplexing situation. View this person as a smart gaming friend who can assist you. Stoicism places a lot of emphasis on the idea that we are not meant to handle things by ourselves. According to Stoicism, we should have someone we can talk to about our feelings and thoughts, just like fighters have sidekicks. According to the Stoics, talking about our problems with a friend is like having a secret tool to deal with life's problems. Consider a friend, family member, or even a teacher that you trust a lot. It's like picking a matchmate when things get tough. Tell me what's going on with them. That conversation could happen in person, on the phone, or even through text messages, whatever makes sense. Don't forget that you're not doing them a favor, you're just sharing the load. They may also give you ideas or information you haven't thought of, just like a good game buddy. Stoicism teaches that it's easier to deal with problems when you have a friend with you. Stoicism's fourth step of detachment stresses not hiding our feelings, but instead knowing and controlling them. Stoicism requires us to notice and accept our feelings while remaining in control. By setting limits for our emotions, we can face events with a calm and collected mind, keeping our feelings from taking over our reasoning. Try picturing your emotions as colored blocks that sometimes stack up to form a tall structure. Well, Stoicism says it's smart to limit how high your feelings can skyrocket. According to Stoicism, it's okay to feel your emotions when things are hard, but you should also make sure they don't get in the way of everything and make it unstable. Stoicism holds that our emotions are similar to those colored blocks. They can be enjoyable, but if we stack them too high, they might become unstable. Philosophers from the Stoic school talked about finding a balance, which is like making a tower that's just tall enough to be interesting, but not too tall that it falls over. Consider your emotions as blocks of different colors, such as happy, sad, angry, and so on. You might tell yourself that when things get tough, you'll let yourself feel those emotions, but you'll also set a limit, like a tower that doesn't go too high. Limits put you in charge, like a builder choosing how tall to make a tower. It's about letting your thoughts be there, but not letting them overwhelm you. Finding this balance, according to Stoicism, is similar to building a strong tower that can survive the difficulties of the emotional game. A careful analysis of the possible repercussions of separating oneself from a specific person is the fifth step in disconnecting. Stoicism teaches us to think ahead and weigh the long-term effects of our deeds. By Stoic standards, this fits with the idea of prososh, which means paying attention to the present moment. Stoicism pushes us to think about how our choices will affect us in the future, even though it places a strong emphasis on the moment. In his meditations, Stoic Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius thought on this idea. It is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste much of it. It could lead to personal growth and mental health, or it could cause a loss that could have been avoided. Stoicism instructs us to consider all of the pros and cons before making a choice, using reason and virtue as guides. Visualize that you are going through a forest with various paths to choose from. According to Stoicism, thinking about leaving someone is like trying to figure out which forest trail to take. Thinking ahead is important in Stoicism, like planning your moves in a game. It's like taking a trail in the woods when you decide to remove yourself from someone. You want to know where it might lead you. Stoics believed that planning ahead helps us make decisions that benefit our lives. Assume that the person you're thinking about is at the beginning of the forest and you are choosing between two paths. 
It's like considering the different paths and imagining where each one might lead if you ask yourself, what might happen if I walk away from this person? Thinking ahead is like having a plan in the woods. It helps you make better decisions, as Stoicism says. Think about what might happen before you decide to separate yourself from the self. Predicting the future isn't the point. Instead, it's more like being a careful hiker in life's wild. Giving yourself a break from social media is the sixth step in separating. Today's society's heavy use of social media has made it harder to stay emotionally healthy. Stoicism's timeless wisdom can help us figure out how to deal with digital platforms and the continuous flow of information. By logging off of social media for a while, we give ourselves time to think and reflect, removing external factors that could cause mental turmoil. Image that social media is a big puzzle. It can be hard to figure out what to do when there are too many parts. Taking a break from this digital puzzle to give your brain a rest is fine according to Stoicism. Basically, it's like putting the puzzle pieces down for a while so that you can think about them again later. According to Stoicism, our minds need breaks just like our bodies do. It's possible to get too many messages, pictures and news on social media at times. The Stoics say that taking a break from this digital puzzle can help us keep our minds focused and clear. Utilize social media like you're putting together a puzzle. Taking a break is fine if it starts to feel too much, like putting the puzzle away and doing something else. For example, you could go for a walk, read a book, or just hang out for a while without technology. Based on Stoicism, Taking a break can help your brain handle more information without getting too busy. Like choosing when to work on a project and when to take a break from it, it's about having control over your digital time. Stay focused. The goal is not to completely give up social media, but to keep it from becoming too difficult to handle. Detaching from people and situations ends with focusing on one's own wants. This concept is perfectly aligned with Stoicism, which places a strong stress on self-sufficiency and inner resilience. Stoic wisdom helps us handle relationships and situations by focusing on what we need to be emotionally stable and morally sound. Imagining that life is like a spread with many different foods, some tasty and some not so tasty. Stoicism contends that when choosing what to eat, just like when picking out food, it's best to prioritize what you truly need. Stoicism is all about making smart decisions, like picking the best food from a menu. Some thinkers, called Stoics, say that what we need isn't always the same thing we want, similar to picking snacks that are good for you instead of just the ones that taste good at the time. Imagine that your life is a menu with people, hobbies, and adventures all spread out. It's better, according to Stoicism, to choose the things that make you happy in the long run instead of taking everything. Saying, I'll choose the things that are good for my heart and my head is a similar idea. Think about what you really need to grow and feel good emotionally. It's like choosing snacks that make you feel good instead of just fast food. Stoicism teaches us that focusing on what we really need will make our life much more fulfilling in the long run. Stoicism offers deep thoughts and useful advice for people who want to remove themselves from people and situations. Our actions are in line with Stoic virtues when we take a temporary step back Think about the logic of distance, communicate openly, set limits for our feelings, think about the consequences, disconnect from outside influences like social media, and focus on our basic needs. Stoicism, with its ancient wisdom, tells us that real detachment is about finding inner peace and resilience as we deal with the difficulties of life and the complexities of interpersonal interactions. Our motivation comes from the Stoic ideals, which point us toward a life of virtue, wisdom, and mental health. According to Seneca, true happiness is to enjoy the present without worrying about the future. Be silent, 
or let your words speak for themselves. This deep idea from Pythagoras sets the stage for what we're going to look into today. In the spirit of Stoic wisdom, we'll be exploring the art of silence and showing you nine key cases where silence is not only valuable, but also life-changing. Silence, a tool that is frequently underutilized, has a great deal of influence over how we connect and find inner peace. The old Greek thinkers called Stoics were masters of this art. They knew very well that peace makes you strong, as the wise Epictetus said. Silence is more than just the lack of sound. It shows that your mind is calm. How to handle gossip? Stoicism, a theory based on self-mastery, provides a powerful lens through which we can view the frequently chaotic world of human relationships especially when it comes to gossip. Our minds and deeds are where our real power lies, not the outside world, according to this old wisdom. Knowing that our inner peace and well-being are completely under our control gives us strength, no matter how much pessimism and rumors are around us. Instead of reacting to gossip, which is a normal but possibly harmful part of social contact, Stoicism suggests that you think things through calmly. Learning to keep our cool and not let rumors and bad things get to us is something we learn from it. We can rise above the rough sea of lies and keep our sense of self and dignity if we choose to react with inner strength and resilience. The Stoic theory stresses that we have the power to change how we respond to things that happen around us. What this means is that we are not useless when it comes to gossip and other people's thoughts. We can instead stand up for ourselves and keep our inner balance. The choice to focus on what we can control, our thoughts, feelings and reactions, is not a helpless surrender. We can handle the rough seas of gossip with grace and wisdom if we follow Stoic principles. This doesn't mean we ignore what other people say and do, it just means we choose not to let them affect how we feel or how much we value ourselves. Stoicism gives us direction, letting us face these problems with a calm mind and a strong spirit, coming out on top intact and firm in our beliefs. The Stoic way of thinking is very helpful in today's world, where information and false information are everywhere. So we can focus on our own actions and thoughts, it helps us figure out what we can control and what we can't. By following these Stoic principles, we not only take care of our own mental health, but we also show others how to handle life's problems with poise and honesty. Stoicism provides a strong framework for dealing with the problems of gossip and outside judgment because it places a lot of importance on inner peace and resilience. This way of thinking gives us the strength to understand that our inner happiness and well-being are not dependent on outside events or views, but are instead under our own control. It teaches us how to stay calm in tough situations and tells us not to get caught up in problems and gossip. Stoicism tells us to rise above the storm of lies and keep our sense of self by choosing to react with inner strength and resilience. This is not an inactive position. It is an active way to take control of yourself. Being self-aware means choosing not to let outside events affect how we feel or how we see ourselves. When it comes to gossip, this means looking at things with wisdom and distance, knowing that other people's words and opinions are just their points of view and not absolute truths about us. In addition, Stoicism tells us that we can change how we respond to things happening around us. This is a strong understanding because it changes the focus from approval from other people to security inside oneself. We don't have to let the shifting waves of gossip and other people's views affect us. Instead, we can stand our ground and keep our inner balance. This way of thinking doesn't mean not caring. It means having a deep understanding of what's important, our principles, our honesty, and the strength of our character. Stoicism gives you patience and wisdom to help you find your way through the rough seas of gossip.
We must have the courage to face these difficulties not defensively or violently, but rather with a calm and steady mind. We come out of it not only unharmed, but also true to our ideals, showing that we are strong enough to stand up to the short-lived and often baseless nature of stories and hearsay. Stoicism is basically a timeless and useful way to live in the modern world. It teaches us to pay attention to the things we can control, such as our reactions, emotions and deeds. This philosophy gives us a place of peace and security in a world where outside influences are constant and often too much to handle. It helps us handle a life's challenges with confidence and calmness. How to get through the storm of insults? We often have to deal with the hard winds of comments and abuse as we go through life. In order to keep our calm and find inner peace during these trying times, we must rely on our resilience. Stoicism, a theory that has stood the test of time, can help you find wisdom in these troubled times. It teaches us to trust our own morals instead of relying on other people's support, which can change quickly. When people insult us, our first reaction might be to get angry or hurt. But Stoicism tells us to look at these things in a different way. It tells us that trying to get approval from other people is a lie that hides who we really are. If you need a witness, be your own, says the Stoic saying, which tells us to trust our own ideals and views. This method changes our point of view, turning our attention from what other people say to our own feeling of self-worth and honesty. Imagine a situation where someone is constantly being exposed to hurtful words, which are shown as speech bubbles with meaningless language. Now picture the same person standing tall and calm. This picture is a strong example of stoic resilience. The words themselves don't hurt us. How we respond to them does. By standing firm on our beliefs, we deny these insults the power to upset our inner peace. This stoic lesson is more than just being able to handle insults. It's about building an inner wall that can't be broken by other people's thoughts and views. It's about realizing that our worth doesn't come from what other people think of us, but from what we think of ourselves. Let's look at the life of Cato the Younger, a stoic politician and philosopher who was known for always being honest. People in his class often made fun of and made fun of him, but that didn't stop him. He stayed true to his beliefs. The story of his life shows that the stoic view that real power comes from our own beliefs, not from the approval of others. Being open to stoic wisdom gives us a deep sense of power. We learn that we have a choice in how we respond to insults. If we choose not to get angry or upset, we stay in control of our feelings. Being cold or uncaring doesn't mean this. It means realizing that our mental health doesn't depend on what other people think. As we go through the ups and downs of life, let us keep this stoic lesson in mind during times of insult or criticism. Let's look to our own moral sense to help us and give us confidence. By doing this, we not only maintain our ethics, but we also build inner peace and resilience that can't be taken away by outside forces. To sum up, the stoic way of dealing with insults is not just a defensive plan. It's a way of life that you take charge of. It gives us the strength to rise above the opinions of other people and find comfort in our own self-worth. By using this lesson in our daily lives, we not only improve our own mental health, but we also encourage those around us to live a more stoic and tough life. This deep statement rings true for all of us who are trying to make sense of the complicated things in life. We often come across situations that don't seem fair as we go about our daily lives, whether they are at work, in our personal relationships, or in society as a whole. Fairness doesn't always seem to be present in these situations, which can make us feel down and fuel feelings like anger, frustration, and a desire for revenge. But Stoicism, an old idea that has stood the test of time, gives us a different view. It shows us that getting angry or wanting revenge is rarely the best way to solve a problem. Not only that, 
but these kinds of responses often make things worse. Our time on Earth is limited, and how we choose to spend it determines the core of our existence, as Seneca's wisdom makes clear. Stoicism teaches us to see problems not as problems, but as chances to grow as people, turning hardship into a force for good change. Think about the story of Epic Titus, a Stoic philosopher who was born into slavery but found great strength and wisdom in his situation. It's important to remember that we can't control what happens in the outside world, but we can control how we respond to it. This story shows that Stoics believe we can shape our own stories and find meaning even when we are hurting and losing people we care about. Stoicism isn't just about getting through hard times, it's also about being able to thrive despite them. It teaches us to stay calm when things go wrong, to put our principles and honesty first, and to not let outside events or other people's views affect our inner peace. By encouraging us to live a life of virtue and resilience, this theory equips us to accept the losses we will inevitably face as part of our journey. To feel like we have control over our emotions, we can follow these stoic ideals. This skill isn't about hiding your feelings, it's about being able to understand them and use them in a healthy way. It's about building resilience so that we can live a more peaceful, meaningful and satisfying life. In the current world, let's look at the situation of getting unfair feedback at work. Taking a stoic approach would mean taking a step back, looking at the situation clearly and answering with calmness and honesty instead of reacting quickly or angrily. A Stoic would try to figure out why the criticism is coming from and use it as a chance to learn, which would turn a possibly bad situation into a good one. Stoicism has lessons and tips that can help people make their lives better. Life's difficulties should be seen as chances to grow. We should stay calm and honest when things go wrong, and we should live a life that respects our beliefs. By following these rules, we can deal with the unfair things that happen in life with a calm mind and a strong spirit, and we can find happiness and satisfaction along the way. Adopting Stoicism can lead to a life of wisdom and resilience when faced with unfairness. It is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it, said Seneca. This quote is a key part of knowing how Stoicism deals with life's problems. As we go through life, we will always come across situations that seem unfair or wrong. These events, whether they happen at work, in our personal relationships, or in society as a whole, can make us feel strong feelings like anger, bitterness, and a need to get even. Stoicism, on the other hand, offers a new way to deal with these emotions. The theory tells us that how we spend our time is more important than how short our lives are. Whenever we let our negative feelings take over because we think something is unfair, we waste valuable time that could be used more effectively. Stoicism advises us to turn our attention away from outward injustices, which are frequently out of our control, and toward our own reactions and deeds. In order to handle these difficult scenarios with wisdom and calm, this theory urges us to stop and think. We develop agency and resilience by concentrating on the things we can change, such as our thoughts, feelings and behaviours. This way of thinking helps us break out of the loop of reacting to unfairness without thinking, so we can act with more thought and intention. Stoicism doesn't say that you should just accept wrongdoing. Instead, it says that you should go into these situations with a clear head, look for good answers and stay away from actions that make things worse. This lesson from Stoicism gives us the strength to rise above the turbulent currents of anger and revenge. It leads us to a road of reason, inner peace, and effective problem-solving. When life throws you curveballs, think about the calm Cato the Younger. He dealt with huge political and personal problems with unshakable honesty and reason. 
Even though there was chaos and unfairness around him, Kato stuck to his beliefs. He showed that it is possible to stay calm and clear in even the worst situations. Stoics say that you should focus on what you can control and let go of what you can't. His life shows how this works. Last but not least, Stoicism teaches us that time is valuable and that how we spend it determines the worth of our lives. By following the Stoic principles, we can handle life's unfair situations with wisdom, staying calm and focused on finding good answers. This strategy not only improves our resilience, but it also makes our lives more peaceful and satisfying. In the complicated web of life, we often sail into the rough seas of other people's stupidity. When we hold on to the idea that we know or understand more than they do, this journey can be especially hard. Still, Stoicism points us in a different direction, like a lantern in the fog. When we're ignorant, getting angry or frustrated is like going against the wind. It makes the storm worse and slows us down. Seneca, a great example of Stoic wisdom, lit the way with these words. To be a human being among human beings and remain one forever, no matter what misfortunes happen, not to become depressed and not to falter. This deep statement points us toward accepting our shared humanity and the challenges that comes with it. It serves as a lesson that staying calm and resilient is not only a virtue, but also a requirement for managing the rough waters of life. To go further with this, let's use the image of a ship sailing through foggy water as a symbol. Just like a ship's captain has to stay calm and controlled to keep their ship safe, we have to do the same when we're faced with ignorance, but that doesn't mean we agree with or support it. Instead, we choose a path of calm understanding over a path of chaos and conflict. In this way, we not only keep our inner peace, but we also set an example that others might want to follow. Incorporating another Stoic quote, Marcus Aurelius said, the best revenge is to be unlike him who did the wrong. When dealing with misinformation, this means not being ignorant ourselves. Instead, we want to be lights of knowledge and understanding that show others the way, not by correcting them harshly, but by setting a good example. In our everyday lives, this lesson is very important. We often judge, respond, and fix others too quickly. The virtue of silence in such circumstances is one that Stoicism teaches us. It's not about being quiet, it's about picking the right fights. If we come across stupidity in personal relationships, at work, or even on social media, the calm way to deal with it is to think about whether our actions would be helpful or just add to the noise. Stoicism, with its deep wisdom, can help you find your way when you're faced with stupidity. This old theory doesn't just tell us to control our feelings and responses, it forces us to do so, creating a safe space of inner calm and peace in the middle of the chaos of ignorance around us. It's an invitation to develop a calm mind that doesn't get upset when other people do wrong. When we choose to react with calm and poise, we not only protect our own honor, but we also help make the environment more peaceful and helpful. Stoic virtue is more than just patience. It's a person who understands and empathizes with others. These times of calm answers and deep silence are when the Stoic ideal shines the best. This lesson also has wider implications for how we engage with each other. When we treat stupidity with kindness and understanding, we not only help ourselves grow and find inner peace, but we also set the stage for future interactions that are positive and respectful. This way of doing things can start helpful conversations, creating a space where knowledge and wisdom can grow. Being calm about not knowing something shows how powerful self-control and resilience can be. When someone tries to provoke us, we choose to stay calm. This is a choice that upholds our values and makes the world a better place at the same time. This way of thinking doesn't support passive acceptance. 
Instead, it supports an active, thoughtful reaction that makes each person and the group better. Above all, the Stoic lesson is a lighthouse that reminds us that how we respond to stupidity has the power to change things. They can be enlightening not only for us, but also for the people we meet on our journey through life. It's a call to action, telling us not to react on impulse, but with the calm, collected wisdom of a Stoic, seeing every situation as a chance to grow and make things better. Finally, as we deal with the complicated ways people interact with each other, let us keep in mind that the ocean of ignorance is very big, but its waves don't have to shake our ship of wisdom. We can not only navigate these seas with ease, but also show others the way by living by the stoic principles of calmness, resilience, understanding, and leading by example. To be stoic, we must find strength not in being in charge, but in the quiet power of our presence and the steady steadiness of our path. On the path of Stoicism, quiet is not just not speaking, it is a deep tool of wisdom, especially when other people are bragging. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus said, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. This lesson goes into more detail about the Stoic practice of remaining silent in these situations. If you meet someone who is proud of their accomplishments, it's important to know that they're probably doing it because they want you to agree with them. Stoics believe that real value and worth come from within, so they know it's pointless to try to get support from other people through their achievements. By staying quiet, we not only keep them from getting more outward support, but we also strengthen our own inner peace and sense of self-worth. The fact that we are quiet shows that we know our worth doesn't depend on what other people think of us. This silence also shows humility. It's a quiet admission that accomplishments are great, but they don't make a person valuable in and of themselves. This fits perfectly with the stoic idea that character and ideals are more important than success in the outside world. This serves as a reflection that our journey is not about being better than other people, but about growing our inner values. Additionally, when we choose silence, we make room for self-reflection and thought. Now is the time to think about our ideals and beliefs and see if the things we do are in line with them. This kind of quiet reflection is very helpful and can give you much deeper thoughts than any words could. When people brag, our silence can also be seen as a way to support them without saying anything. It gives the other person a chance to talk without being cut off, which builds respect and understanding. Using this method can help people have more important and real conversations where everyone feels heard and valued. Giving someone the chance to say what they think is an example of active listening. By doing this, we learn more about them and ourselves. Finally, choosing silence over talks full of boasts is another way to help us be happy with our trip. It supports the stoic idea that we should focus on our road and growth instead of giving in to the temptations of comparison. A more satisfying life is the result of this attitude, which is essential for mental resilience. We should remember that our trip is unique and should be valued as such in the big picture of life. In the end, being silent and keeping quiet when others brag is not a passive behavior. It is a choice that is strong and deliberate. It shows a strong knowledge of self-worth, humility, self-reflection, respect and happiness. This lesson, which helps us live lives of peace, resilience and deep wisdom in the modern world, is still important today. Lesson 9. The Power of Silence this lesson on Stoicism teaches us how to find our way through the deep seas of false tales. Stoicism is a theory that is based on real wisdom. It tells us that we shouldn't get involved in every fight, especially when there are false stories. Most of the time, responding to or trying to disprove these stories makes things worse. Here, silence is a deep act of breaking away from the never-ending loop of gossip and false information 
not just the lack of speech. We support our dignity and character by staying silent in the face of lies. It also shows that we are firm and that our self-esteem is not tied to what other people think. As the Stoics say, we should focus on what we can control, which in this case is our actions and responses. Silence also gives us a chance to see how stories work and how they create relations. Such an observation can shed light on the people who spread and believe these stories, giving us a better understanding of who they are. It's a chance to be smart and understand why people engage in gossip. Also, keeping quiet can help keep disagreements from getting worse. When rumors don't get any attention or responses, they tend to die down. This way of thinking fits with the quiet goal of actions that bring about peace and unity instead of conflict. A self-care practice is to stay quiet when there are stories going around. This protects our mental and emotional health from the stress and sadness that gossip can cause. How do you handle hurt and pain? You can either show it, hide it, or change it. Sharing your pain can sometimes cause more harm than good. It's a sad fact that some people get strange pleasure from seeing other people suffer, even making it worse. This disturbing mix of jealousy and sadness can really get in the way of personal growth. It can show up in many places in our lives, like at work, in our social groups, or even with our family. But you have a powerful source of strength inside you that's just ready to be used. The skill of turning your weaknesses into unbreakable strength. Now it's time to show you 18 deep stoic principles from Epictetus, a famous philosopher whose ideas have stood the test of time. There's more though. Please take an active role in this engaging journey of getting to know yourself and growing as a person. So let's put aside the normal daily distractions and pay close attention to what's being said in the next few important moments. Rule number one, listen twice as much as you talk. Have you ever thought about how simple this part of our bodies is? One mouth and two ears. It's not just a coincidence, it's a purposeful push to make it a habit to listen to the stories, pains and joys of those around us. Epictetus said, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. Listening is more than just a skill, it's a way to learn. While it's easy to add to the noise, real power comes from knowing when to be quiet and listen to what's going on around us. By listening, we can see things from different angles, learn the hard lessons of life and connect deeply. So pause before you speak again. Does it add anything or are you just talking to fill the void? Remember that the best lessons in life often come from hearing other people's stories. Principle 2. Don't let what other people say or do control your life. Does it ever feel like the things other people say and how they feel can easily change your mind? Each mean statement and critical look pulls at your heartstrings and controls how you feel. In his deep wisdom, Epictetus tells us that we can control our feelings in this play called life. There's no reason to let someone else's bad mood control how you feel. Yes, it's hard. Thoughts and words can hurt. But the truth is that you give up your power when you get angry or weak when you're criticized. You're telling them, here, take control of my happiness. It's time to take back that key, but not with anger or hatred. Instead, take it back knowing that your peace and joy are yours alone to control. Epictetus tells it like it is. It's not an easy road. But ask yourself if the path to regaining your mental freedom isn't worth it. Shouldn't you cut those strings and dance your own way? Third rule, be ready for the worst to happen. Unpredictability in life can be too much to handle. When we face the unknowns of life, we often get caught in a web of fears. Fear of losing a job, worry about a child's future, the pain of a failed marriage, or the threat of going bankrupt are some examples. These thoughts change every day, making a never-ending circle of stress. But in this chaos, 
Epictetus's wisdom gives a very brave point of view. He tells us to expect the worst and accept that the things we were afraid of have already happened. That's pretty scary, right there. This is a very different idea, but it contains a deep truth. We find a way through our worst fears when we face them head on. The complexity of life is learned to be navigated with resilience and grace by our spirit, which is no longer bound by what-ifs. Could accepting the worst really be the way to peace of mind? Epictetus agreed and told us to face life's storms, not with defeat, but with the courage to think we can get through them. Principle 4. Don't be afraid to fail. It's the only way to get better. Imagine a world where mistakes are opportunities to grow, not just professionally, but also in every other way. Epictetus, the Stoic philosopher, thought it was okay to be called a fool. Why? Because you can only really grow when you're not afraid to fail or ashamed to stumble. Real success isn't a sudden flash of brilliance. It's a persistent quest, a path full of mistakes that hone our skills. It is not easy to walk this road. There are times when you feel like giving up because you are frustrated and question yourself. However, it is also where passions burn, resilience grows, and real change takes place. As Epictetus said, what shapes us is not the easy win, but the hard-won fight. So, ask yourself, are you ready to fail horribly and be seen as a fool, only to come back stronger, smarter, and more true to yourself. Being great is found in the beautiful, messy process of becoming who you're meant to be. Rule five, keep things easy. Adopting simplicity doesn't mean giving up wealth. It means putting what makes your life better first. Picture yourself surrounded by wealth and able to get anything you want. Even so, there is a question that stays with you. Does this wealth really help you or does it need your full attention and energy all the time? Epictetus was smart to say that wealth is not a thing, but a state of mind. You free yourself from the never-ending loop of bills, loans, and credit card payments by picking simple. This freedom isn't just about money. It's also a deep emotional and mental release. It's about finding joy in the little things in life and realizing that experiences, connections, and knowing yourself are more valuable than stuff. As we learn more about Epictetus's stoic wisdom, keep this in mind. Getting rich is a good thing to do, but its real value is not in what it can buy, but in what it can do for you and how simple it can make your life. Principle six, be humble in everything you do. The wise thinker Epictetus knew that humility is a powerful but quiet force that helps us learn. Take a picture of yourself on a journey. This isn't just any trip. This one takes you away from your loud, cocky pride in what you think you know. You'll reach a place where you realize you know almost nothing on this road. Realizing this isn't a loss, it's a freedom. With the wonder and interest of a kid, you start to see the world around you. Every leaf and drop of rain has a lesson or a story to tell. Epictetus points us in this direction and reminds us that the most important thing about learning is not gathering facts, but being humble enough to admit that we don't know everything. In this place where we don't know, feelings come together. You could feel a rush of fear, the pain of being open and honest, and even a little joy. When we are free from the chains of pride, we really start to learn during this intense storm. Principle seven, know the risks of having good luck. To understand the dangers of wealth, you have to go deep into the human mind, where the draw of money often hides a dangerous undercurrent. Rich people, who are like a double-edged sword, not only attract fake friends, but also have the power to change who we are. It can be upsetting because it changes us, and takes us away from our core ideals. When we get our hands on this valuable thing, we see a different side of ourselves that we might not even know or like. The seeds of moral rot can take root at this critical moment, quietly weakening our character. 
the great Stoic sage Epictetus told us about these kinds of risks. His timeless and deep lessons tell us that what really makes us wealthy is not how much money we have, but how rich our character is. As we go through the rough seas of life, we have to ask ourselves, will we let luck decide what our values are, or will we stand firm on the principles that make us who we are? The answer is inside, just waiting to be found. Eighth rule. Don't hold on to just one hope. Philosopher Epictetus lived a long time ago and knew that life is made up of many dreams, not just one. Why should we only have one hope? Knowing that fate was uncertain, he encouraged us to have a wide range of goals, knowing that having different dreams isn't a sign of indecision, but a way to build resilience. Just think about it. When one dream fails, another one can take off and lead us to success in many ways. This way of thinking isn't about being afraid of failing. It's about recognizing our many-sided potential. As we learn from this, we can turn our weaknesses or Achilles heels into strengths that last and change. Principle nine, always keep in mind that you will die. At the end of life, death remains, a steady warning that time is short. Epictetus, who was a great example of Stoic wisdom, knew this very well. He taught us not to run away from what was going to happen out of fear or stupidity, but to face it with a clear head. We often forget how heavy our own deaths are as we go through the rough waters of life, weighed down by the small and temporary. Our lives are like a fabric, with decisions and acts making up each thread. They all come together in the end, at death. Since this is the case, why do we waste our time on things that won't take us beyond this life? The core of life, the love we share, the wisdom we gain, and the fortitude we gain from our frailties should be our main focus. Principle 10. Being happy is the real wealth. Have you ever felt the weight of wanting something you don't have while the things you do have sit in the corner of your mind, forgotten? The Stoic philosopher Epictetus tells us to change this order. A timeless truth is whispered by him. Real wealth is not in having lots of things, but in having a happy heart. Think about it. How often do you really enjoy the small and big wins you've already had, instead of giving in to the temptation of always wanting more? What if you take a moment to appreciate how good your life is? Mastering Stoicism isn't just about hiding your weaknesses, it's also about turning them into strengths that won't give up. Realizing that happiness isn't at the end of a never-ending search for more is what lines this road. It's here and now, in enjoying what is, instead of wishing it were different. Principle 11. Feeling guilty is a mistake. When you feel guilty, it can be like a heavy cloud following you everywhere you go. We play this game a lot, a tunnel with no way out. We put the blame on other people and on ourselves. By doing this, we escape the real task, which is to take responsibility without feeling guilty. There's no question that it's a hard road and the urge to blame others is overwhelming. But think about this. What if we choose to face our mistakes, accept them and learn from them instead of being caught up in guilt. We should not let shame define us, as Epictetus's wisdom tells us. Finding flaws isn't the point. The goal is to find answers and get better. 12. Make friends with people who are successful. You know how it feels to be in a room with someone who is just a cloud of bad vibes that drains all the life out of the air? They seem to have the power to make a good day bad. But then there are those rare gems, people who just being there lights up the room. Somehow, even on your worst day, they make everything seem okay. They make you laugh and give you hope. It's like they calm down the chaos of life. You shouldn't just choose people based on how fun they are. You should also think about whether you want to be dragged down or pulled up. So why settle for people who waste your energy when you could be in the stars? Don't forget that this is your path and your rules. 
Watch as your life changes, as you choose friends who can help you turn your flaws into strengths. Principle 13. How you respond affects what happens in the future. That's just how life is. We have to deal with the curveballs that come our way. This was clear to Epictetus. He didn't just tell us to choose how to react. He did it himself. Think about it. Do you fall apart or rise when life gets tough? It's easy to feel sorry for yourself when you lose your job, a relationship ends badly, or something unexpected goes wrong. Here's the honest truth, though. These times aren't just problems, they're chances. Chances to learn, grow, and change what we believe in. They are the forge where our character is forged and tried. When these things happen, we can turn our flaws into strengths, our Achilles heel into our defense. When life hits you hard, ask yourself, will this defeat me or will it fuel my success? Keep in mind that your life story is not about what happens to you, but about how you change it with each problem you solve. Principle 14. Do what you need to do. Doing your job isn't just checking off boxes or following a plan that someone else has written. It means meeting your weaknesses head on and turning your Achilles heel into a strength. How often do we avoid taking on duties, not because they're impossible, but because they make us feel the worst about ourselves? When you do your job, you have to face the storm, not with blind hope, but with a determination that is based in reality. There are times when it's hard to let go, but it's also important to love deeply and fight for what's right. You will taste the sharpness of loss and the sweetness of victory on this rough journey. But most of all, you'll learn how strong your spirit really is. Principle 15. Don't pay attention to people who dislike you. It takes a lot of strength to take in other people's hate without letting it get into your own heart. Why let someone else's anger make you feel bad? Just think about this. When someone hates you, isn't it often a sign of their own inner turmoil? Take into account their battle, but don't let it become yours. By learning Stoic concepts, we not only learn to keep bad things away, but also how to change them. It's not about sugarcoating truth or ignoring the pain of evil. It's about seeing that every thread, good or bad, has its place in the big fabric of life. You have the power to decide how to use these lines in your own story. Rule 16. Friendship is more important than money. When things were really tough, when you felt like your own power was crumbling under the weight of the world, have you ever felt the support of a true friend? Friendship is more valuable than gold because it provides a safe haven where flaws are seen as common human experiences rather than signs of weakness. During these times, we truly understand the worth of a friend, not as a cover to hide our weak spot, but as a mirror that shows us as we really are, flaws and all. This link, which goes deeper than the ocean, shows us that real wealth isn't stuff, but the minds that touch ours and the hearts that touch ours in return. Rule number 17. Always try to see the good in things. Life can feel like a storm that never stops. Do you remember times when everything seemed to fall apart? One example is losing a job. It's simple to become hopeless. But what if that's the sign you need to go after the dream you put on hold? Stoicism isn't about ignoring pain. It's about getting stronger when things go wrong. It means understanding that every failure is a chance to make things right. The things that make you weak can be used to your advantage. So fight back even more when life hits you hard. Isn't it exciting to use problems as stepping stones? 18. Let go of things you can't control. You can love someone very much, but they can't love you back. You can work hard to reach your goals, but you can't be sure of what will happen. You might care about the world, but you can't make it better. Why do you feel frustrated, let down and angry all the time? Focus on what you can control and accept what you can't. Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher, gave us this easy but powerful lesson. 
This is the key to not only hiding your Achilles heel, but also turning it into a strong point that won't give in. People are being manipulated all the time. Did you know that hundreds of manipulation attempts are made against you every day? Have you ever thought about how to protect yourself and stay away from the trap? Do you want to learn how to use psychology to make your relationships and self-esteem better? This is for you if you said yes. It's time to reveal the tricks of manipulation, including how it works, what methods are used, and how to spot and stop them. I will also teach you tried and true psychological tricks that will help you get along with others, gain respect, and have more power. These tricks are so strong that they can change how other people see you and make every part of your life better. This video is so important that everyone in the world should have it as a guide. It gives you special information that can help you avoid a lot of pain and troubles. You can watch it as many times as you want, share it with your family and friends, and remember what it says. Don't miss this chance to learn 15 important lessons about avoiding manipulation that no one else tells you. Self-knowledge as a barrier. Do the deep practice of self-introspection, digging deep into your mind to find out all the complicated parts of who you are. By going on this journey of self-discovery, you not only strengthen your own power, but you also build a wall that no one else can get through. To do this, you have to peel back the layers of your ideas, feelings and events to get a full picture of the complex fabric that makes up your being. Accept the idea that knowing yourself isn't a one-time thing. It's a process of continuous growth and self-reflection. You can more easily figure out your skills, flaws, values and goals when you know yourself better. Being self-aware helps you set clear, strong limits that protect you from outside pressures and manipulative forces. Think of self-reflection as a way to gain power that will help you get through life with more focus and purpose. As you go deeper into your mind, you find not only the obvious parts of your personality, but also the fears, hopes and reasons that drive you to act the way you do. When you have this full understanding of yourself, you can set limits by knowing what is in line with your true self and what could hurt your character. Detachment from other people's opinions. Learn how to be emotionally independent by becoming emotionally detached from other people's opinions. Realize that your sense of self-worth comes from within and shouldn't depend on other people's short-term opinions or praise. Getting emotional independence means separating your sense of self from how other people see you, which is a constantly changing environment. To start, you should be aware that outside views change over time and are affected by many things, such as personal biases, social rules, and different points of view. Realize that depending on other people's support for your sense of self-worth leaves your emotional balance open to outside influences like views that change all the time. Think of your self-worth as an internal sense that is led by your beliefs, principles, and true self. It's not that you don't value helpful feedback or important insights. It means that you look at what other people say through the lens of your own self-awareness and judgment. To find and strengthen the pillars of your self-worth, engage in the process of self-reflection. Figure out what's important to you, the beliefs that make you who you are and the rules that you follow. By basing your sense of self-worth on these things inside of you, you create a strong base that can handle changes in the outside world. Mindfulness and self-validation can help you gain mental independence. Create a conversation with yourself that supports your value, regardless of what other people think. This means noticing and enjoying your successes, giving yourself credit for your hard work, and building a good picture of yourself that comes from the inside out. Think of emotional liberty as a trip of self-liberation that frees you from the chains of always needing approval from other people. Learning to separate yourself from other people's opinions is good for your mental health, 
and gives you the strength to go through life with a strong sense of who you are based on sincerity and self-approval. Finally, developing emotional independence protects us from the effects of other people's opinions by building a strong, self-sufficient core that stays strong even when other people's opinions change. Emotional control. Start your journey toward emotional mastery, seeing it not only as a skill, but also as a strong defense against manipulation. A key part of self-mastery is being able to control and handle your feelings with firmness. This protects you from manipulators who often take advantage of people's rash actions. You should know that emotional control is not the same thing as burying your feelings. Instead, it means managing your emotions on purpose. Take the first step by becoming more self-aware. Figure out what makes you feel a certain way and how to navigate your inner world. This increased awareness is the foundation on which you can build a strong defense against manipulation from outside sources. Think of your emotional urges as possible weaknesses that people who want to control you could use. By being calm and not acting on impulse, you keep manipulators from getting the quick answers they want. You instead make room for careful reflection, which lets you react in a way that fits with your values and goals. Learn how to deal with your feelings in a way that helps you stay calm and collected. Some methods that can help with this are awareness, deep breathing, and positive self-talk. These tools become very helpful for keeping your emotions in check, which stops manipulators from upsetting your mood to gain advantage. Keep in mind that emotional control is a skill that changes over time and needs to be practiced and improved all the time. Put yourself in situations that might make you feel sensitive while being aware of how to self-regulate. Your mental resilience will be strengthened by this proactive method, which also protects you from manipulation. Use the power of pausing to give yourself a moment to think about what's going on before you react strongly. This short pause gives you the time you need to think about the situation, possible other people's intentions, and how you should answer instead of reacting without thinking. You can protect yourself from manipulation by controlling your emotions. You can also use them to make better decisions and interact with others more effectively. Mastering your emotional reactions gives you a sense of power that comes from within. This gives you a strong defense against outside attempts to control or abuse your emotions. Empathy Stoicism Adopt the idea of empathy stoicism, a flexible strategy that fosters emotional courage and wisdom while fostering deep relationship with others. Start by recognizing that empathy can help you connect with others in a useful way by helping you understand their experiences. Emotional resilience is an important part of empathy stoicism. Set healthy limits to keep yourself from getting too emotional and make sure you can sympathize without taking on other people's emotional problems. When you're sensitive, it's important to be able to tell the difference between your feelings and other people's and to stay clear and in control of your emotional reactions. Mindfulness can help you stay present in times of empathy, allowing you to fully experience other people's feelings while keeping an eye on your own. This will help you connect with them more deeply without putting your own mental health at risk. Know that empathy stoicism isn't about holding your feelings in, but about using them in a healthy way. You can improve your relationships and stay mentally healthy at the same time by letting yourself feel and understand how other people feel. In order to become a more empathic and emotionally intelligent person, you need to be able to handle your feelings with resilience and wisdom. This will help you grow as a person. Honesty should be valued as a fundamental tenet in all of one's deeds and interactions, as it can increase one's resilience to pressure from the outside world. When you value honesty, you build a strong foundation that not only encourages authenticity, but also protects you from the problems that come from outside forces. Accept honesty as a driving principle in your actions 
and make ethics a key part of how you make decisions. Being honest not only builds trust, but it also strengthens your inner fortitude, giving you a solid base when things go wrong outside. When it comes to partnerships, openness and honest conversation should come first. Real relationships are built on honest conversation, which makes room for trust and understanding to grow. This dedication to being honest protects us from outside forces that might try to trick or take advantage of us by lying. Recognize that being honest isn't just the right thing to do. It's also a smart move that builds resilience in a world where outside forces may make you give in. Your steadfast dedication to the truth gives you strength and helps you face obstacles with honesty. Hold on to the principle of honesty like an internal clock that guides your actions and relationships in a sincere way. You strengthen your resilience against outside forces that might try to move you from your path by doing this, in addition to fostering real relationships. Adopt an attitude that sees difficulties not as problems, but as important chances to grow as a person when you face them. Adversity can be turned into a source of strength and growth by adopting this viewpoint, which is an effective method for building resilience against mental manipulation. Think of each task as a chance to grow and learn. Instead of seeing problems as obstacles, see them as stepping stones. You can learn more about your emotional landscape and weak spots by moving your attention from the possible bad effects to the good chances to improve yourself that are hidden in every challenge. Accept the idea that while problems test your resilience, they also provide opportunities to learn new things and grow as a person. When you take this proactive method, you can deal with emotional manipulation with a stronger attitude based on the idea that every task can make you stronger emotionally and mentally. Develop a growth-oriented attitude that enjoys difficulties. Be curious about how you deal with problems, learn from them, and change your methods for the next time they come up. An attitude like this protects you from emotional manipulation by encouraging you to keep growing as a person. Encourage the use of reasonable evaluation, a method that involves looking at situations objectively and depending on logical thought to build a strong defense against misleading strategies. You give yourself the tools to handle difficult situations with clarity and judgment by adopting this attitude. To do an objective review, you need to separate yourself from your emotions. To see things more clearly, step back and let yourself think about the facts and the people's intentions without letting your emotions get in the way. When you take this thoughtful approach, you protect yourself from manipulation because it doesn't give manipulators the emotional edge they often look for. When faced with persuasive methods, put logical thought first. Instead of letting emotions get in the way, carefully look at the information you have and make sure it fits with your own values and goals. With this logical attitude, you can protect yourself from manipulative tactics that try to take advantage of your emotional weaknesses. Get into the habit of asking assumptions and goals, testing what you already think, and carefully looking over information to tell the difference between real aims and possible schemes to trick you. This mental alertness makes you more resistant to manipulation by encouraging you to think things through carefully. Realize that reasonable evaluation is not the same thing as doubt. Instead, it means a dedication to careful research, mindsets that value logic, reason, and critical thought should be adopted. This proactive method not only helps you make better decisions, but it also protects you very well against people who want to use your cognitive flaws against you. Awareness of nonverbal communication. Learn to understand the intricacies of body language, facial emotions, and tones of voice to become more aware of nonverbal communication. Being more aware of nonverbal cues improves your conversation skills, letting you share information in a more complex and useful way. 
recognize how powerful facial gestures can be for showing how you feel. You can learn a lot about someone's thoughts and responses by noticing the small changes in their face. Being aware of this not only helps you understand other people better, but it also helps you make stronger bonds through sensitive conversation. Pay attention to your body language. It often says more than what you say. Recognize how meaning can be communicated through gestures, stance and movement. Understanding these nonverbal cues gives you a fuller picture of what someone is trying to say, which helps you be more sensitive in your relationships. Pay attention to subtle changes in tone when you talk. The way words are said, such as the pitch, speed and accent, give spoken language more meaning. By paying attention to these rhythmic elements, you can figure out what someone is really feeling and wanting, which makes conversation simpler and more effective. To be an involved listener, use both your ears and your eyes. To fully understand the subtleties of a talk, this means paying attention to non-verbal cues. Aligning your spoken and unspoken signs helps you understand better and shows that you are genuinely interested in the communication process. Know that communicating without words works both ways. Pay attention to your facial emotions and body language to make sure that what you say matches what you mean. Being more self-aware helps you communicate more honestly and openly, which builds trust and relationships with other people. Active listening. Use active listening as a moving skill to read non-verbal cues and make deep psychological links. Through this kind of mindful listening, you can better understand other people, which builds a basis for real and important relationships. Actively pay attention to what people say, but also pay attention to their body language, facial reactions, and subtle changes in tone of voice. Doing so will help you understand the speaker's feelings and goals better. This multi-dimensional method makes it easier for you to connect with other people on a deeper level. Show that you're interested by doing things like keeping eye contact and nodding to show that you understand. These actions show that you are paying attention and create an open space, which makes the speaker feel more comfortable speaking openly. Being actively involved in this way helps to build a real psychic bond. During talks, ask for explanations and confirmation. Know that getting better at active listening is a constant process. Always get better by asking for comments and thinking about how you connect with others. This dedication to getting better makes it easier to read non-verbal cues, which leads to real and important psychic relationships. Positive communication. Use positive communication as a strong way to build a way of interacting with others that makes you feel good and improves relationships. When you use positive words on purpose, you not only improve the tone of your conversation, but you also create a setting that makes your brain respond positively. Pick words that make you feel good and inspire you. Positive words can turn on brain regions that are linked to reward and happiness. By using positive words and sentences, you can help yourself and the people you talk to feel better. Focus on answers instead of bad frames. When you're talking to someone about a problem or disagreement, frame it in a way that stresses possible answers. This methodical technique not only supports positive minds, but it also encourages teamwork in problem solving, which makes the connections stronger. Show your admiration and thanks. Sincerely thank others for their work and accomplishments by using clear and sincere words of appreciation. Neurochemicals linked to happiness and reward are released when you say positive statements. This creates a positive loop that strengthens your feeling of connection. To build a sense of togetherness, use wording that includes everyone. Using inclusive words like we and us to talk to people or groups creates a sense of shared identity and encourages people to work together. This choice of words stimulates parts of the brain that are involved with social connections, which makes conversation more positive and unified. Add laughter and a sense of fun to your conversations. 
when said at the right time and with humor, comments activate the brain's reward system, making the exchange more enjoyable overall. Humor is a great way to bring people together and make them enjoy each other's company. Pay attention to the body language that goes along with good words. Match the good things you say with your body language, tone of voice, and facial emotions. This alignment makes your conversation seem more real and strengthens the good effect on your brain. Know that good conversation works both ways. Positive feedback loops are made when people are encouraged and thanked for their good efforts. This reinforces each other, which makes the link stronger and makes the conversation setting happier and more cooperative. With optimistic minds, practice active listening. Be open and genuinely interested in understanding others when you talk to them. The more positive you are, the better you can understand the subtleties of conversation and the better you can create a positive and understanding relationship. Real understanding is very important. Accept that empathy is more than just understanding. See it as a deep emotional relationship process that goes beyond knowledge. To really understand how someone else feels, you have to put yourself in their shoes and connect with them on a deeper level. Understand that empathy is a living, changing process. Instead of just acknowledging how someone else feels, try to understand their feelings, experiences, and points of view in a deeper, more meaningful way. For empathy to be real, there has to be an emotional stake that goes beyond the surface. This makes the relationship more real. Active and thoughtful listening will help you really understand how other people feel. Let yourself be fully in the present moment and take in not only what is said, but also the feelings and cues that aren't said. This method helps to make the relationship more real and caring. Train yourself to be interested in how other people feel. Ask people open-ended questions that let them say more about their feelings and thoughts. This study builds a stronger bond by showing that you genuinely want to understand how complicated their feelings are. As a basic part of real sensitivity, practice taking other people's points of view. Try to see things from other people's points of view and recognize that their feelings and experiences are real. By putting yourself in their shoes, you can make an emotional link that is deeper and more important. When trying to be sensitive, don't judge or make assumptions. Adopt a non-judgmental attitude that lets people say what they want without worrying about being judged. This acceptance makes a safe space for real emotional relationship to grow. Clearly show that you understand and back what they're saying. Communicate with others through words and actions that show you understand how they feel and are ready to be there for them through it. The mental link is stronger because of this genuine act of care. Pay attention to things like body language and face reactions that people do not say. These small signs often say more about how someone is feeling than words ever could. When you pay attention to these signs, you improve your ability to connect emotionally deeply. Real empathy means feeling both happiness and sadness with the other person. Celebrate other people's successes with real joy and understand their problems and sadness. Having this intense experience together helps people form lasting and important relationships. Trust is built on being consistent and reliable, which is why it's so important in partnerships. Make stability and dependability a top priority in how you act. This dedication to trustworthy actions not only strengthens the bonds of connection, but also builds a strong base for long-lasting and important relationships. Show that your words and actions are always the same, making sure that what you say and what you do are in line with each other is important. Being reliable means communicating and following through on your promises, creating an atmosphere where people can trust your words and deeds. Maintaining trust is an important part of your relationships. Always be on time, meet goals, and keep your vows. 
communicating dependability shows that you are honest and responsible, which are important traits for building trust in relationships. Tell people straight out what you can and can't do. Make it clear to others what they can expect from you and do your best to always meet or exceed those standards. Being honest builds trust because people know they can count on you to be honest in all situations. Recognize and fix errors right away. If something unexpected happens that might make you less reliable, be honest and take care of the problem right away. Taking blame for any departures from the norm shows that you want to keep people trusting you even when things get tough. Develop a personality that is solid and consistent in your interactions. Being consistent with your actions makes you feel safe and dependable. When people can guess what you'll say and do next, it creates a safe and trusted environment that strengthens the bonds between you. Make open conversation a priority to make sure that everyone knows what is expected of them. Check in with people on a regular basis to see if their needs and expectations are being met and to let them know if your own goals have changed. This ongoing conversation makes things clearer and helps keep exchanges regular and dependable. Keep in mind that earning trust by being consistent and dependable takes time. Reinforce good behavior all the time, and if something goes wrong, change direction as needed. The long-term health and resilience of your relationships are influenced by your commitment to upholding a trustworthy base. Think about how your stability affects other people. Know that being dependable not only earns trust, but also sets a good standard for those around you. In both your personal and business groups, this spread effect makes people more likely to trust each other. It's important to show gratitude. Expressing thanks can change things for the better. It's one of the best ways to build and strengthen emotional bonds and promote mutual respect in your relationships. Take deliberate steps to show genuine appreciation for the specific efforts of others, making sure that your thanks go beyond general acknowledgements. Develop the habit of being positive about your thanks by taking advantage of every chance to notice and thank the people around you. By showing thanks on a regular basis, you create an atmosphere of happiness and shared value, which strengthens the emotional bonds between people in your personal and work life. Be careful and specific when you show your appreciation, pointing out specific actions or traits that really touch you. This level of thanks not only shows that you are paying attention, but it also helps you understand and connect with the person you are thanking more deeply. Show your appreciation for more than just individual accomplishments by recognizing the work of a group as well. Recognize and value how success is achieved through teamwork, stressing the importance of shared successes. This shared thanks strengthens a sense of togetherness and encourages respect for each other in groups or teams. When things are hard, use thanks as a powerful tool. Say thank you to those who have helped you and been there for you during hard times for their support and resilience. When people share their thanks, it brings them together and creates a spirit of drive and support. Accept that being grateful works both ways by being willing to receive thanks. Encourage people to appreciate each other, which will help create a space where respect and thanks are natural parts of how people interact with each other. Expressing thanks in writing, speaking, or small ways should become a regular part of how you talk to people. By showing thanks in all of your contacts, you set a positive emotional tone and help create a culture where recognition is a natural part of relationships. Think about how gratitude affects your overall mental health, keeping in mind that it can cause good neurochemical reactions. You gain a deeper appreciation for gratitude's role in creating important bonds when you understand how it affects general mental resilience and well-being. The key is adaptability. As a key trait, show flexibility to show that you are reliable and able to handle difficulties, which will lead to positive views. By showing that you can handle new situations, 
you not only improve your personal and professional image, you also help make the workplace a better place to be. Show examples of times when you handled changes and uncertainty well, such as when you had to deal with unexpected problems or situations that were changing. Stress your ability to adapt and do well. By taking the initiative, you show others that you are not only strong, but also flexible enough to handle a variety of situations. Be honest about your readiness to adapt and change. Show that you have a good outlook on this. This approach encourages collaboration and encourages new ideas, which helps people have a good opinion of your skills. Pay attention to comments and changing needs. Being adaptable means constantly listening to what other people have to say, recognizing where you can improve and changing how you do things to fit. Being open to new ideas not only shows that you want to grow, but it also makes you seem like a trustworthy person who can deal with problems with an open mind. Tell success stories that show how flexible you are. Tell about times when your ability to deal with uncertainty led to good results. By telling these stories, you not only show that you are flexible, but you also give real-life examples of how you can deal with problems well. Think about how change affects the health of a business in a wider sense. Recognize that being able to change is a useful skill not only for yourself, but also for a team or organization's success and resilience as a whole. This makes you seem like you know what adaptation means in a bigger picture sense. Thanking others is very important. Adopting the practice of reciprocal thanks can help you create a circle of positive exchange that leads to mutual respect and the growth of real relationships. By actively taking part in the giving and receiving of praise, you create a supporting space that makes relationships stronger. Say thank you regularly and sincerely. Thanks other people for what they've done by being detailed and sincere. Sharing thanks on purpose makes people feel good and sets the stage for a two-way exchange that builds respect for each other. Allow yourself to receive thanks with grace. Thank people for their kind words and let them know you value them. This will create a cycle of mutual gratitude. When you see thanks as a two-way street, you create an atmosphere where good things happen and are rewarded. Encourage people in your personal and work life to value others. Encourage people to regularly and openly say thank you. You can help build a good and helpful group by getting everyone to agree to be grateful to each other. Share success stories that show how being grateful to others can make a difference. Give examples of times when exchanging thanks made relationships stronger and led to teamwork leading to success. These stories are strong examples of the good things that can happen when people recognize and appreciate each other's contributions. Encourage people to talk openly about how important it is to show thanks to others. Talk about how it helps build trust, encourages teamwork, and makes for a good work and social atmosphere. Making people aware of the practice pushes others to join in, which increases its effect on the community. Use showing thanks to each other as a way to solve problems. When there is friction or argument, say thank you for the different points of view that were shared and the chance for a helpful conversation. This method changes the attention to praise and makes it easier to settle disagreements with respect. Include group efforts in the concept of mutual thanks, not just individual ones. Recognize and value the successes of the group focusing on how everyone worked together to achieve them. This practice of including everyone makes the bonds between people on teams and in communities stronger, creating a culture of mutual respect. Think about how mutual thankfulness changes the way relationships work over time. Know that this practice not only builds respect for each other, but also helps people make real, long-lasting relationships. Being thankful for someone else creates good energy that encourages more positive interactions. By following these lessons, you can not only keep yourself safe from manipulation, 
but you can also build relationships that are important and polite. Under the big sky. Think about a life where you don't have to worry about money. You are taking action to achieve financial freedom, happiness and real joy. Do you think this is just a dream? That being said, you should know that this dream is possible. It's time to dive into the world of eight core principles that will help you break free from the loop of boring ideas. We will not only talk about getting rich, but also about making your soul rich, happy, and full of good energy. These rules are more than just suggestions. You can use them to open up a whole new world. Principle one, don't connect having money with being happy. It is not the man who has too little that is poor. It is the man who desires more that is poor, said the famous Stoic philosopher Seneca. This quote makes a very important point about money, wealth, and how people feel about being happy. The Stoics taught us that money and happiness are not necessarily linked. This is a very deep way of looking at life. Stoic philosophy pushes us to pursue happiness by cultivating virtue and personal ethics rather than focusing on accumulating financial wealth. True happiness doesn't come from getting more stuff. It comes from increasing your virtue. Stoic philosophy defines virtue as more than just a word. It also refers to information, minds, and a way of living. People with self-control can keep their feelings and actions in check. They also have courage to deal with problems, are fair when judging situations, and can use theory to shape their views. We are told that wealth is something outside of us that is unstable and can change. It's not necessary to have this in order to be truly happy. Instead, they think that virtue, or living a worthwhile and important life, is exactly what we need to be happy. Think about this. We've heard many stories about riches who are unhappy and regular people who are happy. The amount of money you have in the bank doesn't always show how happy you are. What really counts is how deep your character is and how good your deeds are. Having things isn't always a good thing. The happiness they bring is short-lived. Take a moment to imagine that you have just bought a new cell phone and are feeling very excited and happy. But after a few months of use, that phone gets old and the excitement that came with it at first wears off. Things in life don't always seem to be able to adapt to the changes that happen in them. New products may make you happy for a short time, but once they become normal, they aren't enough to keep you happy. This means that the link between money and happiness needs to be looked at again more than ever. Stoic thought not only helps us see that material wealth doesn't make us happy, but it also makes us appreciate what we already have. We start to see that we have more than we thought when we learn to value and enjoy the good things in life. Not only should we value what we have, but we should also know how much it's really worth. To make your spirit even more rich, you can also learn to put money into things like knowledge, events and connections. The things you learn, the things you do and the love you share are gifts that will last forever and join you on your trip through life. All of these things contribute to real wealth, a deep sense of well-being and a sense that life has meaning. That's the wealth we should value and learn more about on our journey. A short overview of Stoic philosophy. It has a very different view on how wealth and happiness are connected. The only way to be truly happy is to grow virtue and live a moral life, not to have a lot of material things. This makes Stoic thought a useful way to get ideas for our search for happiness and meaning in life. Rule two, don't put the blame on other people. People are not disturbed by things but by the view they take of them, Epictetus said. This is the second concept. We think a lot about Epictetus's advice that we should take charge of our own path to a better future and not put the blame on other people. Stoic philosophy has a strong lesson for people who are going through life. If we want to make changes in our money and quality of life in general, we need to look at ourselves in the mirror. 
This is a message about taking care of yourself and being responsible for your actions. Think about going on a trip to a faraway island where you are the only master of the ship of your life. We face problems, chances and challenges, but the only thing we can control is ourselves. People tell us that we are ultimately responsible for our lives, but why should you be responsible? Because it leads to freedom and growth. The wind and waves are out of our control during a storm, but we can steer our ship. Sometimes things are out of our control, but we can choose how to deal with them. Taking responsibility for your actions is not a burden, but an opportunity. We have the freedom to make our lives the way we want them to be. Play the part of the captain on your trip. Don't let anything or anyone take control of your life. Take charge of your life and steer it in the direction you want it to go. One of the common mistakes that people often make is blaming others or external situations when facing problems. Stoic thought sees this as a sign of weakness and lack of control. Instead of taking responsibility and finding ways to solve the problem, we choose to avoid responsibility by blaming others or situations. Imagine a case where you join in a sports match and do not achieve the desired result. Initially, you may feel depressed and look for external reasons such as bad weather or an illness. However, stoic thought pushes you to look at yourself. You may understand that despite the challenges, better planning, more careful training, or improving your skills could have produced better results. Ultimately, this principle is closely related to the stoic concept of the dichotomy of control, which includes things we can control and things we cannot control. We may not control external factors like the weather, the behavior of others, or the control of social systems. However, we have the power to control how we react and deal with these factors. Instead of blaming what we cannot control, we should focus on controlling our thoughts, decisions, and actions. This helps us demonstrate a self-determination and not be dominated by external factors in our lives. From the perspective of Stoic philosophy, not blaming others is not only a way to show personal responsibility, but also a way to live a meaningful and free life by accepting responsibility and control. We become positive creators in our own lives and face every challenge with strength. Principle 3. Stop living to please others. Let our thoughts turn to principle number 3 through a famous quote by Marcus Aurelius. It never ceases to amaze me. We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinion than our own. This quote emphasizes Marcus Aurelius's view of focusing on self-awareness and personal virtue rather than seeking external approval. According to Stoic philosophy, our lives depend on ourselves and true happiness comes from self-awareness and self-control. We should not live to meet the expectations of others or seek their approval because doing so makes us dependent on the opinions and judgments of others, putting us in a constant struggle against all the uncontrollable changes and fluctuations in life. We exist in a digital world where societal pressures constantly demand that we conform to and meet their expectations. Under this pressure, many people seem to be swept away and forced to live a life that doesn't express their true selves. All of this stems from the relentless effort to gain approval and acceptance from others. This mindset not only affects how we manage our finances and personal finances, but also drives us to chase after the lives of others. We often try to keep up with their lifestyle, possessions and social status, often at the expense of our own financial well-being. Imagine a young person full of enthusiasm for the arts and passionate about writing books. However, due to societal pressures and family expectations, he gave up his dreams to pursue an undesired financial career. Instead of pursuing his own passion, he chose the path set by others, and this made him feel like he had lost an important part of himself. Passivity often leads many people into debt or living beyond their means in an attempt to emulate 
the extravagance of others. The stoic principle of independence advice is used to stand firm against this temptation and focus on our own journey toward financial independence, like nature always focusing on the bullseye to shoot accurately. But how to start living by this principle sincerely? First, understand yourself. Take the time to discover your values, goals, and personal dreams. You need to identify what truly matters to you and create a clear vision of your life's goals. Second, build plans based on personal values. Develop financial and life plans based on your values and goals rather than comparing yourself to others or meeting their expectations. Third, self-management and control. Stoicism encourages controlling your emotions and behaviors while accepting that there are things we cannot control. Focus on what can be controlled and embrace the changes that cannot be controlled. Additionally, always remember patience. Never forget that your journey is unique and the path to success is your own. Applying this principle is not always quick. It requires patience, perseverance, and self-exploration. When you stop living to please others, you not only gain control of your finances, but also of your life. Don't let societal pressure dictate your financial decisions. Pursue financial independence based on your values. With patience and perseverance, remember that this journey is yours, and you are not just a participant, but also your own unique competitor. By applying these principles, you will embark on a new journey of financial freedom and satisfaction, a profound transformation that brings significant changes to your life. Principle 4. Stop avoiding risks. When we hear the word risk instinctively, we often feel uneasy and worried. These natural emotions often limit us from reaching our full potential in life. We tend to avoid risks and fear challenges. However, we need to know that for personal growth and achieving spiritual freedom, Stoic philosophy teaches us to focus on developing patience, courage, and self-control in life, especially courage. This includes facing risks with insight and determination. If you are wavering about your own courage, turn to the stories of two famous figures who inspire anyone daring to turn dreams into reality. Mark Zuckerberg, technology billionaire and founder of Facebook, once said, in a rapidly changing world, the only strategy to ensure failure is not to take risks. He dropped out of college to pursue the Facebook project, a risky decision that turned him into one of the most successful people in the world in the field of technology, or Elon Musk. After earning millions from PayPal, Elon Musk did not continue on the safe path in the field of information technology, but instead shifted his focus to SpaceX and Tesla. Although both companies were on the brink of bankruptcy, they eventually grew strong, proving Musk's daring. This led to great success. Take a moment to think about this. What sets successful people apart from ordinary people? It's their courage to take risks, they boldly step out of their comfort zones, embrace uncertainty, and face challenges head on. They understand that it is through these risks that they grow, learn, and move towards success. So what does this mean to you? It's about changing your perspective on risk. Courage doesn't mean completely eliminating fear and anxiety. Instead, it's the ability to face risks with confidence never letting fear dictate your decisions. You need to understand that everything in life is temporary and cannot be fully controlled. Avoiding risks is just a waste of time and potential for your development. In our financial situation, it's the same when you take a risk by investing in a new project, exploring a different career path, or deciding to save or invest money instead of spending it on immediate pleasures. Everything may not go as you hope, but everything can turn out better than you think. Learning from risks and challenges is an important part of Stoic philosophy. We grow and develop through facing difficulties. Every failure is a lesson, and every challenge is an opportunity to become stronger. 
patience and self-control are the keys to overcoming these challenges. However, please understand that when we talk about taking risks, we do not encourage reckless behavior. Stoic philosophy promotes calculated and careful risk-taking. This requires deep knowledge, wisdom, and a detailed understanding of your specific situation. This concept aligns with our previous principles of self-awareness and continuous learning. So remember that accepting risks means opening the door to opportunities and potential growth. Stoics believe that maturity and success cannot be achieved if we always stay in our comfort zone. Facing risk boldly is part of building a meaningful and prosperous life. Courage, patience and self-control will help you confront every challenge with an attitude of openness and learn from these experiences. This will bring you closer to spiritual freedom and meaningful success in life. Principle 5. Stop ignoring your finances. Finances are an important aspect of life that we often overlook, but Stoic philosophy has given us a different perspective on this matter. We often hear that ignorance brings happiness, but when it comes to your finances, ignorance can lead to serious risks. Stoicism is a philosophy of life with a message about self-control, building a strong mindset and deep awareness of life. This means that you need to understand your financial situation. When we start discussing applying Stoic philosophy to our financial lives, we open a door to a new world where the importance of awareness and attitude towards finances becomes clearer than ever. First and foremost, Stoic philosophy teaches us to have true awareness of our financial situation. Don't try to avoid or hide the truth about money, but open your heart to face it honestly. This not only involves counting the money in your bank account, but also understanding the source of income, managing expenses, and mastering the situation of debts. In a world where money is often put on a pedestal and counted, Stoic philosophy offers a different perspective in encouraging us to learn about ourselves and our financial situation in the most genuine way. Imagine that looking at the money in your account is not just about counting it, but also about asking yourself questions about the origin of that money, such as, what have I spent it on? Can I manage expenses more wisely? Gain clear insight into your situation and exercise self-control to make wise decisions in managing personal finances. Furthermore, Stoic philosophy not only teaches us about self-control, but also about building connections with others through understanding and empathy. You will find yourself more sensitive to the emotions and needs of others, especially in difficult times. You can share experiences and learn from those going through similar situations. This not only creates a supportive environment, but also makes people feel that they are not alone in their financial struggle. Personal responsibility is also an important aspect. We must take responsibility for our lives and not blame external factors. This means that you are the manager of your financial life and you have the right and responsibility to shape it positively. Finally, we are encouraged to live in full reality. Don't let yourself be fascinated by illusions or misconceptions about money. Instead, Carefully evaluate the reality of our income, expenses, debts, savings, and investments. Remember that you are the manager of your personal finances. Pay attention and take responsibility for your money and use it as a tool to build the life of your dreams. Stop neglecting your finances and start treating them with the care and respect they deserve. Principle 6 Stop neglecting personal development in Stoic philosophy. Self-development and self-improvement are crucial aspects. Renowned Stoic philosophers like Epictetus, Seneca and Marcus Aurelius believe that the path to true happiness lies in the cultivation of the soul and the development of the spirit. Therefore, maintaining a meaningful and purposeful life is closely linked to personal growth. But what does personal development truly entail? In Stoic philosophy, 
personal development is not arbitrary. It is considered a highly important duty. We are encouraged to invest time and effort in cultivating the soul and developing virtuous qualities. The goal of life is not merely to satisfy material needs, but to become better and spiritually richer with each passing day. Let's view personal development as a great journey. It is not about pursuing absolute perfection, but committing to continuous growth and lifelong learning. We should not impose the pressure of perfection on ourselves. Instead, our goal is to become better and more virtuous. Every day, each new day brings us a fresh opportunity to improve our souls and develop moral virtues. Consider another aspect of personal development, self-control. This involves taking responsibility for personal growth and not allowing oneself to be entangled in weaknesses and uncontrollable situations by maintaining self-control. We can effectively streamline the process of personal development and adapt to life's challenges. Now, let's explore a common mistake that many people make. The comfort zone. The comfort zone is where we do not face challenges and do not grow. Although it may be peaceful and stable, it is also a place of deficiency and aging. On the other hand, the growth zone is where we confront difficulties and tread the path of lifelong learning. It is where our spirit and soul are forged and strengthened. The world around us is constantly changing, and if we stop learning, we risk becoming obsolete. Just like a shark must keep moving to survive, we too must continuously learn to maintain our competitiveness. You may have questions about the feasibility of these tasks, given constraints of time and money. Remember that the value of self-control in Stoic philosophy lies in making the right decisions, not necessarily the easiest ones. This may involve prioritizing personal development over leisure activities or unnecessary expenses. What's important is not making huge sacrifices, but making conscious decisions that align with your long-term goals. From the perspective of Stoic philosophy, not neglecting personal development is an integral part of a meaningful and happy life. It is not just about improving personal skills and knowledge, but also about nurturing the soul and developing moral virtues. Personal development is not an ultimate destination, but a continuous journey of maturity and spiritual enrichment. Principle 7. Stop spending beyond your means. Stop spending beyond your means. This may sound like a simple piece of advice, but you'd be surprised how often it gets overlooked. In an era of consumerism and advertising explosion, we are often put in a position where we feel like we need more than what we actually need. Advertisements often promise that owning a new product or service will bring happiness and satisfaction. This creates unnecessary pressure to shop and spend more, even when we don't have the financial capability to do so. Stoic philosophy reminds us that true happiness doesn't depend on owning many possessions or uncontrolled shopping. Instead, it stems from controlling ourselves and seeking happiness from within. When we stop spending beyond our means, we truly begin to practice this control by not letting our needs and desires exceed what we already have. So how do we practice this principle in our daily lives? It starts with distinguishing between our needs and desires. Basic needs, like food, shelter and clothing, are essential for life, while desires like the latest tech gadgets or luxury fashion are not necessary, really must-haves. When we understand this difference, we become better at managing our finances. Modern life often puts us in a situation of uncontrolled shopping fueled by advertising and social influence. Stoic philosophy warns us about this futile consumer trap and advises us to stay away from it. Instead of shopping to feel happy, we should find happiness in connecting with loved ones, exploring personal interests, or experiencing the tranquility of simple living. 
Imagine that you have saved enough money to handle any unexpected expenses without feeling panicked. Imagine the freedom from the burden of debt and having enough financial resources to spend more time with family, explore new interests, or even start your own business. Imagine a comfortable retirement life without worrying about depleting savings. All of this is entirely possible when you live within your financial means. Finally, life is not just about owning many possessions, but also about having a prosperous and peaceful life. When we live within our financial means, we can create opportunities to pursue personal dreams, spend time with family and friends, and ensure financial security for the future. Stopping spending beyond your means is not just a wise financial decision, but also a way of life in accordance with Stoic philosophy to achieve self-control and contentment in life. By applying Stoic philosophy in personal financial management, we can build a prosperous, sustainable and peaceful life. Principle 8. Stop resisting change. Principle 8. Stop resisting change. Finally, in principle number 8, we recognize that change is inevitable in life, but we often resist it. However, Stoic philosophy teaches us to accept and embrace change, understand the temporary nature of life, and adjust accordingly. It is in this adaptability that we truly find a way to prosper. Consider this. Seasons change, tides rise and fall, the sun rises and sets, all indicating the inherently changing nature of life. Just like a river never stays the same, life continually evolves. In our journey, we need to learn to progress along with life, rather than against the current. In the context of our financial well-being, this principle suggests that the economy is always changing. New industries emerge while old ones become obsolete, interest rates fluctuate, and the job market undergoes transformations. Despite the challenges, don't resist change. Learn to navigate it. Resisting change in financial life can manifest in various ways. It could be refusing to accept that our career field is declining and not acquiring new skills. It might be maintaining an old investment strategy even when it's not yielding good returns. Or it could be the fear of taking risks in new investment opportunities and thereby missing out on potential gains. The question here is, what do we need to do to resist change? Below are four pieces of advice from Stoic philosophy. First, we need to change our mindset. Understand that change can bring exciting opportunities and prosperity. Just as a caterpillar must undergo transformation to become a butterfly, change can open new doors. Second, educate yourself. Knowledge reduces fear and is the reason why we resist change. Stay updated on economic trends, investment opportunities, and the best financial practices to guide you through change. Third, a balanced perspective is crucial. Understand that change can bring both benefits and losses. Job loss can lead to a new career. Unsuccessful investments can teach us valuable lessons, and financial hardships can foster patience and wisdom. Lastly, be flexible. Being rigid in the face of change is like a tree standing firm in a storm, but bending and adapting can help us overcome it. Flexibility in financial planning, career choices, and investment strategies helps us deal with economic changes. Remember that the world is a constantly changing canvas, and you are the artist with the right mindset, knowledge, perspective, and flexibility. You can paint a picture of financial prosperity. Embracing change is not only about financial success, it's also about living an interesting, fulfilling life, growing, learning, and developing. It's about flipping through the pages of life and discovering your true potential. So stop resisting change. Embrace it, for it is the path to true freedom and satisfaction. We go through a stoic principles that help you steer towards financial success and an inspired life. Remember that the power to change your life is in your hands.
and Stoic philosophy is, the torch that illuminates that path. As we close this chapter of the ultimate Stoicism guide to building a joyful life, remember that the path to true happiness is a journey, not a destination. The wisdom of Stoicism isn't just about learning, it's about living. It's about making small changes every day that lead to big transformations in how we see the world and our place in it. We've explored the principles of Stoicism, from embracing challenges to finding peace in the present. Now, it's up to you to apply these lessons to your life. Remember, happiness isn't found in external achievements or possessions, but in the strength of your character and the tranquility of your mind. Take a moment each day to reflect on your progress, be grateful for what you have, and remind yourself of the power you hold to create joy in your life and the lives of those around you. Thank you for joining us on this journey. May the lessons of Stoicism guide you to a life of purpose, resilience, and profound joy. Keep walking this path, keep growing, and keep discovering the boundless potential within you to live a truly joyful life.